the voice of one crying the wilderness prepare the way of the lord make straight in the desert a highway for our god the voice of one crying the wilderness prepare the way of the lord make straight in the desert a highway for our god the voice of one crying Lift your hands before the King of Kings He deserves every single thing So I pray this and offering Today we have come to bring Is the song daily that we sing
us today. Satisfy us according to your promise. Show us the right way, the way to walk in. And we'll be able to say this is the way God has appointed. I will walk in it without turning to the left or to the right. May our ears be open to hear. Thank you. Let the voice of the shepherd be loud and clear. I take authority over every spirit of fear. Be silent. In the name of Jesus. This Wednesday's meeting, typically it's a Bible study, and it's often been converted into more than a Bible study, of a praise meeting, a worship meeting, a every kind of meeting. Some Christians do not know, some of God's children, that there are different kinds of meetings, different kinds of gatherings. There are gatherings where... you might focus on one thing or the other. It's like having a, a class in secondary school as opposed to primary school where they have what you call a class teacher. That is one teacher teaching all the subjects in secondary education or the upper grades in the American system or the, and the high school from grade seven to nine and high school that's in the United States, <laughs> but here yeah, secondary school, Britain secondary school, um, we, you don't have a class teacher, you have a subject teacher. Now the Holy Spirit can be like a subject teacher. He can be a class teacher, okay, depending on your level. But sometimes what helps make the distinction in the dealings of the Holy Spirit as we grow up, hear me well. As we grow in the Lord, the Holy Spirit may not seem, I mean in meetings, if you want to understand what I'm saying now, you're going to adjust it to meetings, corporate gatherings of the church. In corporate gatherings of the church, we could study every subject, and we've done that a lot. That's a lot of what I've been doing for, the, for more than six years. So we study so many things. We touch on so many things. And by saying study, you might say, oh, different topics of the Bible. No, that's not what I really mean. I actually mean that let's pretend st studying the Bible itself is almost like one subject. Or it's a general heading for different kinds, like say mathematics, but there's just plain general maths. There's further maths. Uh, in times past, there were other aspects to that, you know. So... We do all of that. But I'm thinking of a specificity of a subject teacher in the sense of saying that in one meeting we can do many things, but there are meetings where you can just do one thing. That's like having the Holy Spirit as a subject teacher. So the Holy Spirit is present. Well, let me finish the general class teacher model. So teaching could be a class. Worship and praise could be a class. You know, by worship, I mean thanking the Lord, acknowledging Him in praise, in songs, melody, your heart. Praying. Prayer could be another part of what He's doing. All of it in one meeting. So praising, praying, studying. But as Holy Spirit, as a class teacher, sorry, as a subject teacher, you could come for a meeting and there's no praying, praising, none of that. It's just, we are just studying. That's all. All right, you're welcome. Let's settle down. Let's open our Bibles. You just heard it. Oh, you're welcome. Okay, let's just stand up. We are here to bless the Lord. We are here to worship Him. 
Yes, we are going to hear, be here for six hours. We're going to lift the Lord up. And all we do is, like a subject teacher, the Holy Spirit is guiding us into the truth about praising and worshipping Him. Not necessarily in teaching on it, but actually just praising and praising. The focus is pray. Now, these are the kinds of things that sometimes happen in conferences, certain kinds of churches. But I'm trying to say that it's something we must grow up into. Also, now we've had meetings where this happened, okay? It's not that it hasn't happened, but I'm saying we will have to get used to it a bit more because we will have meetings where nothing else happens except one thing, to be very focused. And the Holy Spirit will be as a subject teacher. For the person that doesn't understand that, maybe you're very young, a subject teacher comes in to teach maths. He doesn't teach any English. She comes in to teach English. She doesn't teach you any geography. She doesn't start asking you how many states are there in, were there in America originally. It's not history class. They will not teach you history. You will not be taught history. And so on. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Are you sure? So there will be classes that or meetings that are like classes, focused classes. And the Holy Spirit shows up not as a general teacher, as your class teacher. All right, today we are going to do any one of 18 things. And we touch, and in this our congregation, we do that a lot, you know. And I touch on so many things in all directions. We do this, we do that, we do this, we do that. Okay, and that's what we are used to. And people are always looking for, all right, did they spread out the whole buffet? Was there this and this and this and this and this? We are going to be a bit... Sometimes you just come and just say, let's pray. We present ourselves to the Lord. We are here. Holy Spirit, teach us. We are here, Holy Spirit. I must just bless the Lord. Again, we have done this many times, but I'm saying it's going to happen even more. So don't um, have that mindset where you might say, okay, I'll come to the meeting. Maybe I might be a bit late, maybe 30 minutes late. By then, they wouldn't have started teaching or preaching. No, we might start teaching and preaching by one minute, less than one minute into 5 p.m. It can be a Sunday morning. It can be any other day. All right. I want to correct something from doing the announcement. Well, add something, not to correct, but correct something. Uh, please, about the backdrop. Okay. Uh, the moderator said, don't copy all. And she said, I can't remember what else she said. Don't copy any. <laughs> don't copy it at all. And then don't um, wait till BBS to get it. No, just ask before you leave the hall. Ask, send a message, ask for a number. Say, I want all those diagrams. They will send it to your WhatsApp or your email directly. I'm saying this to the people on, online too, because sometimes they are not listening to me. They are looking behind me. I don't know if you can zoom in and it's just my hand from here to here. That, okay, don't do that. Yes, I'm telling you. You know how often I stand here, sit and look at people. They don't pay attention to me at all. You pull out their notebooks. You know now you're here. You know what you used to do. And they, they are taking down every note. Did you see those scriptures? The scriptures under this thing. <laughs> they are collecting free Bible study. We will send it to you. Just give us anything. An email address, Telegram, WhatsApp, anything. We will send it to you. Just ask. Just ask for a phone number. Go online, send an email. Please, I would like the diagram. We will send you the pure, this exact thing. In high quality. You can print it out. We actually encourage you. Print it out. Keep it on your room wall, on flex or something. Use it and do Bible studies. If you don't, if you haven't had messages on it, you don't understand it. Just keep looking. Read your Bible. Look up each of those words in the Bible. After some years, it will make sense. All will make sense. You know, it will be so splendid. So feel free not to copy it during the meeting because it distracts you. But ask for it and we will send it to you. Okay? Yeah. So. That is that. Um, what else did I want to say about the library? 
about the library, I'll encourage you to to um, do borrow books. But I, I believe the moderator said it well enough. Borrow books and read. Ask. The library is, I think it's now inside. This is, this one is someone, someone is selling those books. Not, not us, but it's one of our brothers. It's not around. I think if you want to buy a book, you ask, you look at the price, and uh, you tell whoever is around there. If there's nobody, I think there's a box there. Small box with a hole in the top. You look at the price, you put in the amount of money, and you carry the book. That's how much we trust. Is that story still in Macmillan? You say be a story in Macmillan readers about a village where nobody stole anything. What happened again? Someone went and stole something. Happened. What happened to him? They born him. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right. So you just drop the money in that box. I think I heard that yesterday or so before some days ago. And so you can even buy a book without seeing anybody. I don't like the idea because there ought to be a place where it's written that this book was bought. So I think it's garbage. Kind of, you should ask for someone, meet someone. Ask for Sitatuchi or I think they say Esther Kalu. Oh, ought to have been in charge of the library. The library has books. I haven't seen a lot of books. Do I presume I read them, borrowed them and went travel for strike? Okay, so we start counting. Seven months counting, right? Seven months, fine. And dare any of you come back and say you didn't finish reading it. Dare. All of you online people. Audio or video. You better read those books. And read more books. You have to read books. Absolutely. You must read. Too many people don't read. It's so sad. Some say things like I'm not a reader. I don't care. Are you educated? If you're educated, you read. If you could read to pass exams, you better read. To pass these exams. The consequences of these exams are more than you know. Yes, I know what you read matters. That's why we I hope the books here are okay. And some of the books were on loan. So we also welcome people to loan books. And some people took books from their personal Christian library. And uh, you see it, if you open the page, you see on loan to God's Lighthouse Library. So those are brethren like you. You might have books, you've read them. And you're willing to loan. Or you bought so many, you can't read all at once. Excuse me. Rather than keep it in your house, your 52 books, you can bring 48 and keep four and read. And bring the rest here. And we hope to return it in a good condition. And others can read it. So some of you might borrow books. You've seen it there on loan to God's Lighthouse Library. That means it belongs to a brother or sister here who has read the book. And I... In response to my request some years ago, kept it. So while you are hoping to have money to buy your own, in the meantime, you can borrow other people's own. I hope that's clear. I think they are inside now. Ask. Or maybe we will move some of these other things inside. I don't really know. Just ask. And uh, books, maybe on Sundays, immediately after the service, you can keep a table. You keep a table there. And spread them out. People see better when books are spread out. All right. So let that happen from Sunday. Keep a table, one or two tables, and spread out the books. There's something God may have been bringing to your heart. Borrow a book, read. It does not mean that every single thing in every book I agree with. Okay? There may be things I think are scripturally incorrect. But again, you remove bones from fish, don't you? You don't say, I will no more eat fish. Because of bones. So if you have anything that you question, or maybe you read something and then you hear me preach something else, make sure you ask. Make sure you ask. If you're part of this house or even a visitor, feel, don't, never fail to ask questions. It may be that I am wrong and I need to correct it, or you may have misunderstood something I said and I need to clarify it, or you may have heard us here say something that it's just different and strange. We may be right. And that person you read may be wrong. And the best thing to do is check it out in scripture. All right? Is this clear? Yeah. Please, as I often request, if there's something that bothers you, ask. And uh, we'll do our best to share with whatever light God has given us. You might ask in your heart, so how do we know? 
how do we now know who was right or wrong? And I'll say that it's not everything we can know. But I do want you to know that you can be a bit more sure of certain things. What is it that helps people be a bit more correct in their interpretation of the Bible? It is the foundations and the pieces they have that, are, that fit in harmoniously. The more harmoniously the word of God fits. Maybe I'll give an example. I was shown something, but I'm not sure I've read it through. Uh, it was very long. Um, some video clip that was posted from a message. You know, the cut out part. One was about baptisms for the dead. For the dead, and the other one was about what again? Suicide. Suicide. That one was about suicide. You know, and someone commented that they wanted to correct something I said. And fine and good. And I like that. I wish you people were more like that. I'm not saying you don't ask questions. I know you ask a lot of questions during the Believer's Bible School, which is not videoed and so on. But um, do feel free to ask questions. I don't know if I'll, answer, I'll comment on these things here. I have commented more extensively. You know, when someone hears part, or like when you're repeating something for the third or fifth time, you may not say as much as you said the first time when you're trying to explain it. So I'll ask that our technical people, go and dig up. Yeah, I first talk about suicide, 270 or 80. Go dig up those things. Now, maybe I gave more scriptures there and uh, clarified more. But if it's possible today, I'll make a comment and I hope it will maybe brought to the notice of them. It wasn't someone here, it was I think someone from outside. The only thing I'll say is that, you know, I have thought I want to correct people, but why I have a three category filing system is that sometimes you think you're correcting someone and <laughs> you're actually not correcting them. Why? Because you may be wrong about it. They may know more on that thing than you. So how can you, how can the answer be two plus three is four? And the person wrote for and you say, I want to correct you. The answer is three. You can only correct it if you are correct. Right? So first, you must be correct to correct. Yes? I didn't say you must be perfect to correct. I said you must be correct to correct. You, you must be correct about, no, it's, it's, it's red. No, this is peach. It's red, peach, purple, and blue. And you just say it's red and blue. I'm correcting you. I heard you mention peach and purple. Uh -uh, they are not two colors. They are four. Apart from the milk white, off white there. So in attempting to correct, make sure you are actually correct. Do you understand? But we are, now how can you know you're wrong if you don't? So do what you can do with what you know. But sometimes, like I often think about these things. What I believe that brother or sister, I'm not too sure. I think it's a brother. What he understands and the little I read of what he was trying to say in scripture, not really scripture, but what he was saying. Well, that's how I used to think too, okay? For maybe 15 years. So, you, you know, there's something about telling someone about something they used to believe. It's different. There's a difference between ignorance and upgrades in knowledge. There's ignorance where someone does not know any better. And then there's more understanding. <clears throat> so I hope I may be able to comment that. Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe online someone may comment on what I've said. Then one more thing. I started saying it last, uh, was it on Sunday or so? I never completed the statement and nobody ever <laughs> helped me. Concerning the, the newsletter. I started saying that there are two. I took a copy and I pointed. I never completed it. One is the is the that copy, like that copy you have online, and you can go to a printer and say, please print this out for me and staple it, and you have your copy. That would be the printable printable version of the book. Then there's the e copy, which is arranged. Maybe I completed. Is arranged differently. Okay, it's rearranged. For easy reading online, you can read it on your phone, a tab, the 
size is it doesn't have columns it's different it's the same content but it's arranged differently it's easier for your eyes and it's also in the epub version so that's the one that's to be that is is should be online all right so both of them are there if you're far away you read uh, what you read in the newsletter you saw that it's very sound and it would be good to share it then just copy download it and give it to a printer and tell them to print and make copies for you and you'll be like ours a hard copy maybe you want to read it yourself then open the e-copy of that same newsletter is that clear all right so what are we studying today who has the topic <laughs> we read we finished second corinthians 11 remember and you didn't have questions you know we were hurrying out that day it was nine o'clock and all of that and paul gave us a list of his qualifications his suffering his floggings the pain and struggles he went through remember do you remember and uh we would like for we would like for sorry we got our aces on loan have you seen our AC? You haven't seen? I told you I wouldn't wait for you. Cannot be waiting for you. So bring your money. Before Auntie calls his story. For SARS. <laughs> you borrow money from within. So nobody's looking for us. And for that, I'm happy. When you don't take money from outside. No police. No lawyer's letters. That's fine. And that's good. Just that, as of now, it only works with um, public power. So as long as there's no public power, you can't have it on. I haven't yet seen it on. But uh, I think some of you may have before I came up. <coughs> but when it's... Uh, we don't have a generator yet that can carry it. The generator can only carry the, the sound and this. So we need... Uh, we need uh, a bigger generator. And um, I don't know if I'm going to share it this way. Okay, I've, we've done this one. I think we should get a generator. Or just stare at it. You can take pictures. After, you can have them stand here. You grab, say, ah, see, our, see our church meeting. It's fine. But why is everyone sweating? Because they'll see the shiny sheen on your face. And you say it was not on. <laughs> <laughs> and you explain why. <laughs> Mother, are you fanning yourself just because I'm talking about this? Okay, okay. <laughs> Someone now said that now that we've finished, now you had the sound reduced. The windows there are not closed. If they close that side too, it will be more silent. You know? So it cuts out the loud noise. Which group is this? Beneath or across? So, it reduces the sound, okay? Again, if they close the other way, you hear almost nothing. To reduce my but I was now told, now in addition to that, if you really want it to be more sound, you need to put up curtains. And not light curtains, thick ones that hold sound. And I say, you see, that's the thing about life. <laughs> There's no end. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so please don't look and say, wow, God provided. He did. <laughs> About, I think, seven or eight people gave something. Some small, one big. But um, we still need, um, I think it's online. We still need how much? Uh, we got about 200 and something thousand. We spent about uh, 1.4 million. So I think we still need about 900 and something thousand for just the ACs. Yeah. You know how to write down that number? 
Start writing. Nine. What about for just put zero, 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 zero. Just be writing like that. All right. So I welcome you to give if you feel led to, to help us offset these costs. I mean, you can even give the generator. I hear it's just the cheapest option we found. Is it's a bit less than what we thought originally. But it's, I hear it's noisy, so I don't know how that works. All right, so that's the updates on the AC. When was this announcement made? Sunday. Then today is Wednesday. God helped us. We saw these things online at 150,000 Naira less than we bought it. So in our mind, we saved almost almost half a million. Which is cool. Okay. Yes. I said who has the topic. Now I can talk about any of 1,000 things. All I need to do is start talking. It will go in the direction the river is flowing. Okay, it will go. That's not a problem. But um, I think I open my computer to open my Bible and I'm seeing something. Maybe I'll share a little on this. Yes, I saw something interesting. You guys will like this. Let me read a prophecy from a man of God that he got a long time ago. I'll read, a, I'll read it and maybe then I'll give you scripture. Well, in fact, let me give you the scriptures first. First Timothy 1 verse 18 says, this charge I commit to you, son Timothy, according to the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by them you may wage the good warfare. BSB says, Timothy, my child, I entrust you with this command in keeping with the previous prophecies about you, so that by them you may fight the good fight. You will fight the good fight if you take the commands, listen, entrusted to you, commands, commands, and mix them, combine them, align them with the previous prophecies about you. So there are prophecies that have been given about all of you. All the time I'm hearing people share something. They'll say, oh, this was what I was told. You know, maybe something comes up in their life. And sometimes, you know, again, we always say this very interesting. Sometimes it's two or three years later. Sometimes six months later. And they say, oh, when I came here, the first time I came here and I was prayed for, like we do on Sundays for our first time visitors. You know, we pray for you for a minute and share some words of knowledge and uh, wisdom and prophecy with you. We do that because the scriptures say that prophecy is given in First Corinthians 14 for edification to build you up, exhortation to instruct and encourage and comfort and comfort. So there are three things that prophecy is meant to do. And when we therefore share prophetic counsel with visiting or new people, we are hoping to do what the church is for. Scriptures tell us that the church is a place for edification. Ephesians chapter 4, it tells you that he gave to some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and some teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry service for the edification the building up of the body of Christ to build up so the purpose of the fivefold ministry, the purpose of the deacons, which we studied 
on Sunday, you know, the saints, the works of ministry. And, and the, the purpose of all of this is to build up the Israel of God, the body of Christ. That's the purpose. So when you come here from the very beginning, apart from the teachings you may have heard and anything else that was that I said, we strive to immediately begin to build you up. Scriptures are not the charges of scripture are not the only way you get built up, but also what the prophecies which are spoken concerning you. Are you hearing this? Why sometimes we struggle and we are weak and we don't go as far as we can go is because we are broken down. The opposite of being pulled down or broken down is to be built up. That's the opposite. To be built up. So prophecy builds you up. Therefore, those who, according to 1 Thessalonians 5, you despise prophecy. You despise prophesying. You despise it. There are areas of your life that will not be built up because the spirit and the word are in agreement. And they are the two major builders of our faith. Is this clear? Yeah. So you're built up, son Timothy. You're a child of God. You're built up by the commands which are in keeping, in line, which are similar. He was charging him. Paul said, this charge I commit to you according to the prophecies. I entrust you with this command in keeping with the previous prophecies. So the prophecies came first and then the charge came after that. The prophecies previously had been given. This is what I'm saying. Listen, listen, listen. You need to understand this. You need to, all of you need to understand this very well. You didn't know anything. You were this unserious human being. You were lost. Someone saw you and said, the Lord is that. Now, there's fake prophecy. I'm not talking about fake prophecy. There's real prophecy. Someone, one or two or three people on the street, wherever you were, you knew nothing about anything. You were smoking and drinking. And someone said, I see a call on your life. Young man. You don't know your calling. Another person told you. Another person told you. You're a pure sinner. Not unadulterated. You're a sinner. Nobody's arguing. That's prophecies that have gone on. on you. And then you come to a place where someone preaches to you, instructs you, and you come and you're being charged and preached to and all of that. And you're receiving a strong charge from anybody or whoever God has chosen to use. If what they are charging you is in line with what was spoken about you, that's exactly what was happening to Timothy. What do you need it for? That you may fight the good fight. That is you being strengthened on the right side and on the left. That is you being given two witnesses. For by the mouth of two witnesses, every matter is established. So matters are being established concerning you. To remove any room or excuse or struggle, okay? To remove any struggle, anything in your mind or heart that says, uh, I am not sure. Am, am I right? Am I wrong? Am I missing it? How can you be missing it? You were told that you are called to do this. And then someone is now charging you in line with those things. Then you should listen. You should fight a good fight. What makes us to be defeated often is double-mindedness. James chapter 1 says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. There's a shakiness because you're not sure you are right. But when you have received it by prophecy, and then you've been charged in line with that. It is also why you must be willing to always do more than what you have heard in prophecy. It's not enough to be given prophecy. After you got the prophecy, go and get the charge. Are you hearing this? Go and get the charge. Go and get the commands. If you don't get the commands, the prophecies will fail to come to pass. Many people have said, they prophesied to my mother. That's how they prophesied to my father. And it didn't happen. What did your father do after he got the prophecy? Were there commands that were, that came with or after that time? If there were commands and they did not obey those commands, I am sorry. 
those prophecies will fail. Are you listening to me? Oh yes, that's why people say they prophesy. It didn't happen. What happened? Happened what? Happened what? They gave you a prophecy. I see you. I see you. I see you settle this this year. I see you settled in a family. I see. I, I see a woman with a child. Are you married? No. I see a woman with a child. You you're gonna carry and it's a baby boy. Baby boy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. One person gave the word. Another person gave. Someone that doesn't know. I had a dream of someone, you know, a, a baby. Okay. And you're like, praise God. I'm going to have a child. Going to, that means I'll be married and I'll settle down. This is around February. And I see Shunem. 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 Oh, the Shunem. Oh, the Shunem, my woman. Ah. Elijah told her this time next year. So you're like, I have one year. Now between that time, you now get desperate to marry by all means because you must find a man that will help you fulfill the, the work. And therefore, you start dancing around men, blinking your eyes like minimums. Someone tells you, no, you can't look like this. You must look very sharp. Is this how you look? Is that how you get married? So you start dressing like a daughter of Jezebel. You start doing all sorts of things. 17 men come after you. You agree to all. <laughs> Think your blinkers are on. Have you seen a car driving with American car blinkers? Have you seen a, someone, a car driving and the lights are blinking like this? So you put on blinkers on this light, in this earth. Traficators are shiny. And you, who used to be correct, obeying God, or maybe you didn't, you didn't know. Now you are agreeing to, and people are trying to hug you, kiss you, touch you. People you have not said I do to. All sorts of nonsense. And you are agreeing. You're saying, well, let me not be the one that blocks the, the prophecy. Can I suggest to you that you are actively blocking the prophecy? Oh, yes. You ignore the commands. No, no, no. I know, I know what God, I know what God said about me. What did he say? Whenever you hear a prophecy, look for the commands. In a hurry. Whenever a prophecy goes ahead on you, wait. Next thing, wait for the commands. Now, did this word come to pass? One of two things may happen. It may or it may not come to pass the way you think. Let me give you two scenarios. One, by February, you're pregnant, but you're not married. Bouncing baby boy. Do you hear me? The boy is there. It's a boy. Very healthy. They no get papa because one man came and said, "You know I love you, but I have to be sure you can your pet tire. Say you be ground. Say you be land. Say you be farmland." <laughs> so since you're a piece of agricultural tract, say I need to be sure you can take him. Then they check, has she taken him? Okay, and it's one month. Okay, let's meet your pastor. <laughs> May God pity you. Because that man goes home and his mother gives him a prophecy that the prophet said that he sees one fair girl, that she's not the one. No, no, no. He sees a future of pain. Pain and sorrow. Bad luck. It's like, it's like they dreamt of you and saw you and all your businesses, your four businesses fell. Don't try. Is there any fair girl? And that's how you never do. You can't say I do because he, he, he did not do. But you don't believe in abortion. That's how he became Mama Bomboy. Is this clear? That's a scenario. There's the other scenario where nothing happened because you obeyed no command. You misunderstood the Almighty God. You think that when God says he'll do something, he's giving you permission to ignore him. The person who promised you it's really easy if you want to understand it. It is me saying to someone, I am going to do this for you. And you step away from me and start disobeying everything I tell you. You start disobeying everything I tell you. How are you going to be disobeying me and waiting for me to do what I promised you casually? Come here. Why didn't you clean the car today? I don't feel like I remember you told me that you're going to allow me to be driving to school. 
One strike is over. Well, I had promised you you'd be driving to school. And I also told you that you need to be, I've told you after that, be washing the car every day, warm the car. Now, you don't warm cars now, but those days. Or put on the car, let the engine run a bit, put water in it, the radiator, if it needs that, check the oil levels. I told you to do that. And now, but daddy, that's not for me, I beg, I'm not a mechanic. You don't understand, son. As who calls off strike. Daddy, I came for the keys. The keys to what? Your room? Is it locked? <laughs> no, no, daddy. Keys to the car. Oh, my son. Mm. You know, when I told you the future, that you'll be driving my car when school starts in your final year, I thought you would, between then and now, learn how to manage a car. But the way it's going, I know the engine will knock within the first two weeks. And I don't want a dead car, okay? The daddy, you promised. I promised to give the car to a son I thought would be responsible, who would learn how to take care of the car. Every time I told you to wash the car and check the oil levels and do all that, I was trying to prepare you for me to fulfill my promise. But since you don't understand how promises from God work, um, use care. Use public transport or walk. That might even be healthier. You added too much to it. Bye. Imagine this guy, Daddy. He promised. He promised me what exactly? What did he promise? He promised he would give you a car, and you forgot to take his instructions. Truly, truly, you kill someone within the first month of driving. You don't take any instructions. When he's going somewhere, he says, "Come, enter the car with me. Drive." Say, "Daddy, please, I'm tired." Daddy, you drive. Don't worry, I will be driving. You will, not this car. Often that's how God's promises work. Have you heard me? Those who don't know, they say, no, no, no. It's, it is not like that. I like to tell you that it is like that. And the quicker you know it is like that, the better. The book of Jeremiah chapter 18, verse 7, says something. You should take note. At any time, I might announce that a nation or kingdom will be uprooted, torn down, and destroyed. But if that nation I warned, this is a prophecy, and he said, if that nation I warned turns from its evil, then I will relent of the disaster I had planned to bring. I will relent of the disaster I have planned to bring. If the nation I warned that I would bring disaster upon, to uproot it, to destroy it. He says, if the nation turned from the evil it was doing that made the prophecy to be fulfilled, in, uh, to be spoken in the first place, God is saying he would change his mind and relent about that disaster. Did you see that? Look at the flip side. And if at another time I announce that I will build up and establish, build up. Are you seeing this? I promise to edify and establish a nation or kingdom. And if it does evil in my sight and does not listen to my voice, say command. Say charge. Then I will relent of the good I had intended for it. Do you see this? Is this clear enough? Does this prove the point I was making? So you do not look at the most high God and say, huh, it won't happen. Now for the New Testament, those who split scriptures into two, when you should never, seeing Jesus did not, neither did any of the apostles, one of the bad habits picked up from deceiving spirits and passed down through careless people and sometimes sinful people. The scriptures here say in the book of Romans chapter 11, which I have to give you, or there will be someone disputing now. I'm hoping I won't talk too much today, but rather I'll be answering questions. I welcome you to engage. Romans chapter 11. <clears throat> Where should we read from? 22. 
If you read just that verse, let's read 22 and 23. Take notice, therefore, of the kindness and severity of God. Severity to those who fell, those who fell, severity to those who fell. Fell from what? You would need to read earlier on. Those who fell from a place they were. And who knows what they fell from? One word. It's in this passage. They fell from his kindness. If you are not sure, you'll be sure soon. So they were once enjoying his kindness. Then they fell out of it. And what were they now enjoy? God's severity. Because he has severity and he has kindness. And for those who don't know how that works. The word kindness is grace. And the word severity is penalty, judgment. Severity to those who fell, but kindness to you. Who is this you? He's talking to the Gentiles. Again, go read yourself. Now read with me. If you continue in his kindness, stop there for now. Stop. Look at me. Don't look at the scripture. It will, it will affect my delivery. <laughs> So we see two groups of people, right? Those who fell. Who were they? If you read Hebrews from chapter, the book of Romans from chapter 9, 10, 11. The Jews. The Jews fell. Who were the Jews? The chosen people. The royal priesthood. The kingdom of priests. And you're like, no, that's in Peter. No, that is in Exodus. No, 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 no. They, I've explained it. Was it on Sunday again? I summarized it. For all of you who don't understand what happened, there's a lot of error in the understanding of God's people all over, sincere servants of God. Some have not studied it for themselves. Some don't just get it. It's not that. They, there's a, there's a, you know, there's a, whew, how do we put it? You know how you don't check out something yourself because someone told you, someone you respected said it this way, so you just accept it. You just didn't check for yourself. It's something we do. We do it with the things our parents tell us. We do it with the things our pastors tell us, our favorite preachers say, our teachers may have taught us. It's not that we are evil. It's just that we are misguided. We have ideas that are not necessarily true. You just believed it. The person that told you, the very nice person, you've always respected their view. Agree. The challenge is that the best people may make mistakes. They can make mistakes, sincere mistakes, and pass it on. They heard it from someone. That's why they've been saying it. Some people, and you find that out as you grow older, sometimes someone has been saying something for 32 years. You think it's easy? Let me tell you a secret. As someone who has been born again for 30, what years? 33 or 34 years. Every scripture you misquote now, that is early, you'll be misquoting it as the years go be careful. Every scripture you misread, every understanding you pick up that is wrong, except you, you are listening and learning. You hold on to it very tight. With time, you act as though Jesus came and wrote it on golden tablets and gave it. Not because it's correct, but that's what you heard and believed. And this is a mistake you don't want to make. So really what? That's why your foundations are so important. That's why we are so big on foundations. I heard a lady speak about how she got, she, so she said she may have gotten born again on and off up to 40 times growing up in a so-called Christian family. Her husband, on the other hand, grew up with zero Christianity. His mother and father, his mother got pregnant in secondary school, American kid, you know, and his father, they both drink drunkards and parties, party goers. They just zero God. They didn't worry about God. And they met. And this girl slept around with many people. And this lady meets this guy at a club. And the guy is so drunk. She helps, drives him home. Then she sleeps with him and gets pregnant. And calls him four weeks or eight weeks later and says, do you remember me? That is, she's never met him before. She never met him again after that. And has to even ask, do you remember me? And says, yes. Summary, I got pregnant for you. Whatever. But they end up living together maybe about three years or so and thereafter this is real and thereafter she's um she's uh what happens the guy is hearing a voice strong 
voice saying something to him about seeking God. That's how he looks for a pastor. He, he hears a message preached and he's like, I need to get born again. He's hoping that that pastor will give an altar call and he does not. So he goes after the pastors and basically asks him to please lead him to Christ. You understand? And he does the typical thing. And then after the guy is still hungry for God, one word there, and he starts reading his Bible or something. Later he goes to a Bible college, Bible school, where he tells his wife <laughs> or his girlfriend. Oh, his girlfriend tells him, well, more or less that, you know, wow, it's good for you. He tells the girlfriend, I'm born again. I says, good for you. I tried that. It didn't work. It didn't work for me. And uh, as for one time, he's getting to understand God. And he tells the girlfriend basically that you are not, that from what I'm seeing, what a Christian is, you are not that thing. And she gets offended. There's nothing as bad as the religious spirit. I was wondering, but you know you're not. Okay, just don't tell me what I know. You, you know, have you seen human beings do that thing? I know, I tell myself this thing in secret. I, I beat myself for it. But don't, how dare you tell me? Aren't we weird? <laughs> they are very funny. Human beings. She goes on to, I can't remember. Let me fast forward. She, she to get received again. And she's, okay, she hears a voice. I only agree to her, but I don't agree to her. She was not, was she confessing it before she, while she was, and she was getting received. I'm looking for the conditions that led to her getting received. Okay, okay, so she felt bad, very angry, and then later conviction came and all of that. And she starts, I think she was opening up to him or something. No, but she heard a voice say to her that if she does not repent now, that more or less this is the last, that is going to hand her over to a reprobate man. That is, the word reprobate means, I'm not sure she knew what it meant. I, we've studied it. A documus is the opposite of documus. A documus means rejected. Just like anomia means lawless. Nomos means lawful. Documents means accepted. A documents, the negation, is rejected. So when you read in Romans 1, all that it says, God hands you over to a reprobate mind. A mind that has been rejected. The Holy Spirit is not trying to work on it anymore. They don't leave them. You know how they reject something? Throw this thing away. Put this thing in the dustbin. That's, that's a documents. And the Holy Spirit was telling her, that she would be rejected if she did not give her life to Jesus. That moment. He said, up till this time, you have played games with me. You know, and this happens to people. Sometimes you walk around, you're looking at people, and you think you know what is someone's problem. You don't. You don't know what is someone's problem. Some people are, have been rejected. May you not be rejected. May your brain, it's not the person, it's, how do I explain it? The Holy Spirit leaves your brain alone. It just doesn't talk to you. It just, it just passes you. It just, it, it, yeah. The Holy Spirit is convicting people and come. Oof. Oof. <laughs> the terrible thing. Don't allow the Holy Spirit to skip you. Now, if you're here listening to what I'm saying now, you're not a monk. Don't worry. But I'm, I do mean that you should be careful. She had been like that for 20 something years. For 20 something years, she had been pulling those thoughts. So he told her, he said, listen, this is the last time I'm doing this with you. If you don't, now. Thank God! Thank God! Because only God knows how many people God has left in it. Sometimes they are the worst enemies of God. You won't know why they fight you so much. There are people that have been rejected and, and, and they hate because every time they see you, they know you are accepted. And therefore what happens? She gets, now, why did I start telling this story? One day she's there and she's like, God, I want more of you. Like this hunger for more. And what happened? And she's like, nobody, she's by herself in her house. You know how you have not, it's not that you've been influenced by, and she rebukes it. I rebuke, I rebuke. Why? Because her background was Baptist and tongues have ceased. Prophecies have ceased according to their teaching. Everything has ceased. So she rebukes it. <laughs> Nobody laid hands on her, nothing. She sees Jesus. 
just with her eyes open, wide open. She sees. So she has all these prophetic giftings and things happening in her life. Not from, I'm not, I didn't know if she was going to a church. And I'm giving that as an example of why people can experience God's severity. When it's plain, why would a former Baptist who does not believe in tongues or anything like that start speaking in tongues? Why? It's different if people took you and put you around and brainwashed you. Nobody had talked to her. She wasn't brainwashed. It came out of there. I've heard many of these kinds of stories. People that I love those stories. People baptized in the Holy Spirit without being told <laughs> or knowing, even knowing <laughs> that there's, uh, there's that story I heard about this one. She didn't even know. She didn't believe in tongues. Though. She thought it's wrong. Why? Because of her church. Wrong. Then one day she heard people speak in tongues. She said, what's that? She said, that's tongues. She said, hey, that thing happens to me. I normally, when I'm praying seriously, that usually happens. <laughs> How long? For years. For years she has been speaking in tongues. But since they are taught, they don't believe in it. She does not know. She didn't know what it is. She just does it because she found out years ago when she was praying, you know, and she loves God that the thing just comes out right back a language that she does not understand. You know, the human brain can be a real hindrance. Be careful your brain does not run your life. The Bible is very clear. I will pray in the, with my spirit and I'll pray with my understanding. Your understanding are the things you understand. Your spirit, the Bible is clear in 1 Corinthians 14 that when I pray my spirit with the spirit, my understanding is unfruitful. The King James says, I don't understand it except the gift of interpretation of tongues or another language. The word tongues is just languages, language. But King James will say tongues. And because most people are reading King James only, so give calling it tongues. It's the word languages. Okay, so when the Bible says, Every tribe, every nation, every tongue, every language. Okay? All right. So I was reading uh, Romans 11 to 22. Oh, sorry. I didn't finish. I was also trying to make the point. The husband started opposing her because the Bible school he was going to. Ah, there's nothing as bad as the false religious spirit. False religion. I don't like saying religion is bad. The Bible says there's pure religion that is undefiled in James chapter 1. To visit the author and the widow in their distress and to stay unspotted from this world. That's true religion that is undefiled. So when people say I hate religion, I don't know. I don't like talking. It sounds, sounds enlightened, but eh, I don't want to hate anything the Bible does not hate you. Rather, there's false religion. There's true religion. Therefore, there must be false religion. So false religion is confused. And this same husband will look at her and say, why do you seem so fulfilled in your relationship with God? So back and forth. Just to give you closure on this story, that family, that woman's prophetic gift is super. The husband can teach. The husband thought about how he could hear any message and repeat it in a very good way. Fantastically. But nobody ever gets it. Then one day, his wife drags him along. He agrees to go. Someone prays for him. He falls under the power of God for 25 minutes. He stands up thereafter. And he opens his mouth. People are transformed. Now, there are people that hear all of this. They don't care. That like, what? Don't tell me. Don't, don't tell me. Don't tell me. It's evil. Yes, people are getting saved. Drops are everywhere. Yes, so the Bible says, I bind you. Me, tie me ropes. Fling you outside. And sit on the veranda of God's kingdom since you like it. It's in the you. I don't know what's wrong. It really offends me when people... Ah, people are... Ah. Dear God, thank you, Jesus, for light. <laughs> what's his name? <laughs> this Cameroonian <laughs> professor, Tani Pomo, Zach, Zacharias Tani Pomo, said that he, he, he had a friend, had a friend, was in the university in uh, Kenya or somewhere, you know, Uganda. A school and they'll go out to preach almost every day. They'll preach, 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 preach. I can't remember the details. How, how often they say they'll preach? They could preach to 20 people in one month. One month of preaching, four people might give their life to Christ. They're very zealous. They didn't joke. They kept going till his friend betrayed him and went and got baptized in the Holy Spirit, wherever, whatever the exact thing is. And I speak in these tongues. Very annoying. The only good thing, sir, is in one week, seven people might get saved from that time. Bet. Bet why? 
So people were getting saved up and down. People were repenting. It became easy. People were turning to Lord. Why? Is it? Oh, because the Bible says you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit is come and you shall be my witness. And that's what happened to that man. They even know their name. You know, in the video clip I saw, they're being interviewed by Toban. What's that name? Toban Sorengard. But the point is that there was a real transformation in both of their lives as the Holy Spirit came. And the wife is very prophetic. You know all sorts of things, telling, knowing things about people's lives. Just. But I found it very interesting because as they're talking, they weren't really talking about church. I didn't know. I don't know. But it was just interesting. But it's each one humbled themselves at one stage or the other. Wonderful things. And at the last they had, I mean, they, they started holding Bible studies and uh, they had multiple in a short time they eat home churches you know they'll be talking to someone in a supermarket and the person will start manifesting deliverance is that just normal and here's this woman that used to sleep around the world and here's this man whose both parents were drunkards so by the time he was a small boy he was smoking and drinking and doing everything and ran away from home as this young young man all of that it was all bad already but when the Holy Spirit, when they give their life to Christ, one phase, one stage of events happened. And when they got filled with the Holy Spirit, another set of events happened. Every time you desire to go, it's a video I'd like you all to watch it. And lay hands, okay, we, you remind me and we clip it up, this testimony. But it's interesting how they ended. They said they found out that when they travel for missions, They'll go for missions, preach. When they come back, they're on fire. They change more and more. But they found out that all the people in the church, when they leave and go, are the same, with the same old problems. Have the same old problems. They have the same issues. They're struggling with the same temptations and sin. All that. But they, as they keep traveling, as they keep going for missions, as they keep going out to do what God wants, that they are being transformed more and more and more and more and more. Are you listening? And they said that they now realize that ha, many people that because they'll talk to people, some of them preachers, all sorts, and they end up giving their lives to Christ. They'll talk and next thing someone say, I shall like to get baptized. Uh, you know, policemen, yeah. People deliverance, everything we talk about, deliverance, everything it was interesting to hear because the woman is there with a the baby, trying to they're just sitting on the couch, the man is there. It just look absolutely normal. I don't know their names or anything, I don't know their names. But they look very interesting. And there are many, and of course, this is how it usually is. But all these events are happening in their life. Because they, they know a little. And they now say that it teaches, teaches Hebrews 6, verse 1 and 2, that everybody has to go through to it. Everybody has to go through Hebrews 6, 1 and 2. What we call the Believer's Bible School here. Yeah? That we hold on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays by 5 p.m. You know, you know, he says exactly that that's what, that, that's what they, that he found out that they decided that there's no need this because it's too common. We keep meeting people that are at, that have no, they couldn't understand. Remember their background. So they said they couldn't understand. Why, why is it so? He said, Oh, no foundation. And they started focusing on that. He said, he, he used almost the same words I used. He said, Whether you've been born again for one week or 50 years or 30 years, that you, you must first go through this class. That he found out without it, people don't have something to gain. On. This class? I finished that story because it's a sweet story and exciting. But we are not getting people as baptized in the supermarkets and in the spirit or cast their demons in the taxi as much. How about we think we baptize? Does that help? We baptize small, have we? Baptize them. How we eyes not how we used to be. And we used to baptize people in the Holy Spirit on the shop, on the road. We used to walk on the road. One of our people was walking on the road with and a group of Muslim children. And the girl was acting somehow, manifesting or something. Just in Abuja, she walked there and touched her or something. I think the girl fell under the power. Or whatever happened. Whatever. She, she she became okay. All sorts of things. So you have to check yourself. You have to check ourselves and get more. The lady was saying that whenever the word is preached, that the Bible says 
that we are to be witnesses, that signs are to accompany. That that's what the Bible says. And she was saying very simply, hey, yeah, you know how the Bible says, yeah. He looks like a mother, <laughs> just a woman. <laughs> With this terrible background, doesn't matter with God, never matters, has never mattered. But you see where you take one road or the other. And that's why I was telling you, with those people, they choose the right road. When I speak concerning a people, I will judge you and you repent. You turn from your evil. When I speak concerning someone, you're doing good and you go evil. It is God's nature. I showed it to you in Jeremiah 18. And I know that there are people who are going to hear it and say, no, no. Uh, <laughs> so I came to Romans 11 to show you, you can slap Paul. You can kick Peter, but Jesus is constant. And if you ever read Matthew 7, you will know. There are many who say, Lord, Lord, when that day comes, you say, I, I don't know you. I don't know you. He said you should take notice of the kindness and severity to those who fell, severity to those who continue in his kindness. That's in his grace because you can fall from the grace. How hard is that? You can fall from the kindness like the foolish child who was told to wash the car. Take care of it. The kindness, you can drop out of it. This you must do. Read with me that last line. Otherwise, you also will be cut off. Those who have been shown kindness can be cut off. Is that French, Latin, or Filipino? English. Those who enjoy kindness can experience severity. To those who fell, when they cut you off, you fall. How could it be clearer? From the apostle of grace that you can be cut off. It's very clear. And he's not the only one that says it. Paul says it multiple times. Peter says it. Jude says it. John says it. All the apostles of the Lord say it. The apostles of the Lamb. That's the first apostles. With the apostle to the Gentile. All of them confirm it. With the elders. James and Jude. The brother of our Lord Jesus. All of them say it. Then the Lord Jesus himself, the book of Revelation, says it over and over and over again. I will take away your lampstand. I will do this. I will do that. Outside are the dogs. Dogs are those who go back to their vomit. When prophecies come concerning you, better look for the charges, the commands that go with it. And they will align. If they don't, if you think, no, no don't worry, I have a prophecy. Do you know how many people have prophecies? Your parents have never told you of any prophecies they had. Some of them don't have the heart to tell. They are too embarrassed. Some of you may have spoken to your parents. I've heard people tell me from this house, as they came to know the Lord, they are excited. Some of them talk to their parents and their parents say, yes, when I was young, I was told similar things. But you and I know that that thing is no more a possibility or has not continued because your parents fell, fell from the Lord, turned to the world. What happened then to the prophecies? That they were given. What happened? Was God lying? Mm -mm. You can be cut off. You can fall from kindness. God can speak concerning a nation, a kingdom, a person, a people. I hope you know kingdoms and nations are comprised of people. God can speak to you and you choose to go the wrong way. If you don't obey the commands, Proverbs 6.23, if you don't obey the charges, for this commandment is a lamp. This teaching is a light and the reproofs of discipline are the way to life. The way to life. The way to life. The words which I speak to you, John chapter 6, they are spirit and they are life. The words which I speak to you, scriptures say, the words which I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. Are you hearing this? The reproofs of Discipline are the way to life. The word reproof, does it sound nice? The word discipline, does it sound nice? The reproofs of discipline. Every time the finger is wagging at you, every time the correction is coming, reproof, not given in hatred. There's reproof of hatred. There's reproof of envy. There's reproof of discipline. Put better, the reproofs of discipling. There's the reproof that is discipling you. Are you understanding? They are the way to life. The reproofs. Stop. Don't be doing that. Should have done that. The reproofs that come. 
to discipline you. They are the way. They literally are the stones that come together that you walk in and end up in life. They lead to life. But if you're not receiving reproofs of discipline, I repeat, there are reproofs that are not reproofs of discipline. Someone can be reproving you because you're the favorite child and she's a wicked stepmother. Cinderella. Someone can be reproving you every time because they are jealous. When you wear your clothes, they look so nice on you. You don't even understand. Every time you wear clothes, they look so nice. But when they wear, so, go and take off this thing. You're getting reproofs, but it's not discipline. It's reproof of Mufana. But there is the reproofs of discipline. They are the ones that are shaping you. They are godly corrections. They are corrections that God is sending into your life. They are the way to life. These are the reproofs you want. The commandment is a lamp. If you don't have the commandment, but you got the prophecies, I can assure you, you likely will never enter it. Go and ask Judas. Ye twelve shall sit with me. Have you read? Matthew chapter 19 verse 28. Jesus said to them, Truly, I tell you, in the renewal of all things, when the Son of Man sits on his glorious throne, you who have followed me will also sit on... Twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Twelve tribes. How many, how many people were following him there? One, two, three, four. Who do you think used to count money? Who do you think may have counted how many people were present? Is Judas going to sit on this glorious throne? How do we know? Because the book of Acts chapter 1 tells us his office, let another take, because there has to be twelve people on twelve thrones. And the new name there is Matthias, not Judas. For Judas died with his guts gushing out. This prophecy did not come to pass in his life. And it came straight from the mouth of Jesus. So every attitude that says, once I got the promise, I got it. My God is not a man. He's not. When he beats you one hand, you are dead. He's not a man. He said, you who have followed me, Judas. Did you follow? Did you follow? Follow does not mean physically following only. It means to follow what God does. If any man will come after me, let him take up his cross and follow me. You can never follow Jesus without a cross. Following Jesus requires a cross. Should I help you? When you see follow, put copy. That will help you understand it. Simply. Ye who have copied me, let him take up his cross. His cross. Your cross. Well, are you able to drink of the cup which my father has given? I'll drink. And they said, yes. He said, you will drink indeed. There's your cup. There's his cup. There's his cross. There's your cross. And everyone who wants to sit on a throne, want to be an overcomer, want to partake and sit at the right hand in the throne with the Lord Jesus, you are going to have to take up the cross. Judas did not do crosses. Mm -mm. You don't steal money while you do crosses. You're not going to be stealing money. No, no, no. If you do crosses, you won't steal money. A cross is a cross. It's not fun. But when you're like, mm -mm, I don't do crosses, please. How do I manage? Then you steal money to counter the effect of your cross. So Judas will steal and lie and sell out his master for cash like most are doing today while singing heavenly race. <laughs> Which race? The one that in between, they are seated. Everybody is gathered around the table of communion. You're saying, excuse me, to God and say, oh yeah, oh yeah, where's the money? Bring. Is it up to 30 pieces? One, two, three, four. Wait, let me count again. One, two, three, four. Come. I'll go and show you where he is. Uh, uh, soldiers, bring them. They are many. By then, they are pushing you. You know, when they paid you, by then, when you talk, they push you. That they go. Whether we are many or not, how he took them to Jesus' secret prayer place, the audacity. He entered and kissed him on the cheek. He had the audacity, master. The soldiers are paid. Like, oh, eh, eh, eh. Maybe, and I, I really do think it's possible. He thought Jesus would do as he used to do. Possible. Because so I want to just said, whom do you seek? Jesus, not this. I am that like this one's good. They fell backward. Maybe Judas went like, ah, I trust my master. Which master? Which master? 
The master said, take me, let them go. He was offering himself. Jesus did not know that all things work together for good to those who love God. All things. He just helped. See, Jesus loved God. <laughs> so Jesus helped. If someone else could have done that job. Uh, I don't ever want to do that kind of job, I beg. Uh-uh. Let someone else do it, I beg. Let someone else join your leadership. Let someone else join your church to come and do that job. Don't do it. Jesus, Jesus said, he said, it's better such a person was not born. But Judas went like, since I was a thief when you met me, I always loved money. That one human being took away a name from the catalog of names. Do you know anyone ever called Judas? Just deleted a name from being accepted. Oh yeah, call it, uh, <laughs> a name that had been there since. The book of Jude, the guy's name is Judas. It does say Jude, I bet, stop, remove the A. Remove the a. <laughs> Have you not read that Jesus had 12 disciples and one was Judas, not Iscariot? Where did he go to after that time? <laughs> How can you be that thorough? This guy was so thorough, he, he changed the language. Nobody agreed, carried the name. Before that, it was a popular name, Judas. They are the ones, one of the sons of, of, of um, the priest who took on the, in the book of, uh, that took on the, the Greek, in the time of the Greek Empire, Antiochus, Epiphanes, that whole season, the book of Maccabees, Judas, it was a proud name. No more. I'm just saying that you can lose what you have. Give me the book of Acts. Show me that his office, let another take the composite of two passages. Acts chapter 1 verse 20. For it is written in the book of his Psalms, Go, on, go back, go back to verse 18. Now with the reward for his wickedness, Judas bought a field. There he fell headlong and burst open in the middle, and all his intestines filled out. Eesh. This became known to all who lived in Jerusalem. So they called that field in their own language, Akel Dama, that is field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, may his place be deserted, let there be no one to dwell in it, and may another take his position. Therefore, it is necessary to choose one of the men who have accompanied us the whole time the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from John's baptism until the day Jesus was taken up from us. For one of these must become a witness with us of his resurrection. So they proposed two men, Joseph called Barsabbas, also known as Justus, and Matthias. Okay? And they prayed, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which of these two. You! have chosen, you have chosen to take up this service, ministry, diaconia, an apostleship to take up this assignment of being sent out, which Judas abandoned. Don't ask me any question. To go to his rightful place. Amen. Okay. Take it away. Take it away. <laughs> uh, have mercy. The son of perdition. That's what he was called. Son of perdition. The Bible tells you another son of perdition is coming. I can assure you he will betray men who look to him because they will look to him. The horrible day when Christians that you know who go after a false Christ is coming. A horrible day. They will go after him and he will betray them like this son of perdition. The Bible calls him the son of perdition. Jesus called him that. The same name, son of Apollia, son of destruction. You have questions? Where did they come from? What did I say that is worthy of all these questions? If there's any question about what I've said about prophecy and the commands and the charges that go with prophecy. If you have a question, raise your hand. If you haven't written it down. Are there any here about that? Okay, so all this is something else. But if you have a question about what I just written, ask quickly before I go into this. Even if this is your first time, please let me always say this. If you're online, you have a question, send it in on our Telegram channel or where else are we? Wherever we are, YouTube, on YouTube, type it in, send it in. If you have a question, always ask, ask quickly, okay? So I can have time to answer. You have to understand that my messages are not scripted. So it's not like I have scriptures all written down somewhere that I can. So if I'm to answer you with scriptures sometimes, apart from what I have inside my wells, I have to dig up something for you, okay? Yeah. Okay, sir. Concerning what you spoke about, prophecies having to 
pass because we didn't obey the commands. Is it possible that you could go back to fulfilling a prophecy or does it apply to times and seasons? What you are trying to ask is, is it possible that after you lost out on the prophecy, you may have a chance again? I didn't talk about losing out at all. Because, yes, there are times and seasons, there are Kairos moments when time intersects with chance. But sometimes it can reoccur. Yes, yes, yes. Someone may have been meant to be saved at 17 and start walking in something and did not. And God saved at 27. It doesn't mean they will not fulfill. That young lady, that woman I'm talking about, if she had given her life to Christ and stayed serious with God from when she was 17 instead of maybe 27 years old or so, however old she was, she may have started growing and walking in all that grace and gifting from that time. Of course. But it doesn't mean that she lost out. When she did turn to the Lord, seriously, her gifts, the things that were kept for her, activated. Yeah. So I, I did not infer. So let me rephrase your question. Your question would, should be, rather, are you saying that once we lose it, we lost it? Not necessarily. Only God knows. God knows. For her, maybe her 40 times, maybe God said, this 40 times that you tested me, don't try it again. Always remember what I like to emphasize, to whom much is given, much is expected. Okay, the moderator said some of that when she was speaking here. It's like something that does happen with people who come here. And you get to understand many things. Many of your reasons for not following God are stripped away, just taken away. So for you to turn your back on God, you made a real effort. You made a real effort. It's not that thing, eh? Well, there was this question I always had that was not answered. Eh, very hard. Which question? It was answered. It's before. We used to have that excuse. So I used to tell our people, I used to say it much then. I don't say it much now. I say, <laughs> I used to beg them, stop, don't come here if you don't want to know. I, I will harm you. How I will harm you is I'll make things too clear. They'll be too clear for you to be able to deny that you know what it means. Now, after that, there's nothing like God I didn't know. How will you say it? He knows you knew. He knows all that your excuse about, I didn't used to understand. You now, you, he knows you understood. It was a choice. You chose this present age. It was too attractive to you. And you made a choice. You turned your back. It's like saying Judas did not know what he was doing. Not possible. But Paul did not know what he was doing. Do you understand? Bible says, he said, Paul said, God showed me mercy knowing that I did what I did in ignorance. You cannot say that about Judas. He knew what he was doing. But his greed for his greed for 30 pieces of silver was so high. His love for money. And why it was so bad for me is because he had sat with Jesus. And in the midst of being with Jesus and all that, he was able to harden his heart so much. His ability to keep hardening his heart gave him a rejected heart. A conscience. His conscience was, I like to say, damning. He didn't walk anymore. Then he got remorseful. But he still bought land. Question. The Bible says before someone asks me, let me just answer. The Bible says in one place he went and threw back the money. Say, take it. They say, no, you don't want it. Take it. And the Bible says they took it and bought the field. They call it the potter's field. This place says blood and all that. And someone will look at that and says it's contradictory. Have you thought it may be complimentary? Have you considered that they may have bought the land? He may have bought, given it to them and they packed it and took it back and gave it to him. And he now said, well, let's not lose out completely. I went and bought land. And one place says he hung himself. Another place he says balls, bust a son, he fell headlong. What is wrong with him hanging himself, then falling? As he was falling from the tree, hung himself, his stick tore his belly and his death and spilled out. It's not that come if you're looking for what to doubt, you find. You can hear parts and pieces of any story, and there are parts to it that they pull out some parts this way and that way. It seems to contradict. But they may just be have you heard two people tell me a story before? This one says this, this one says this, in between this one says this and this. If you separate it and tell it without what this one said. It might seem as though you're, you're telling a lie, but it's not a lie. It's just missing aspect of what, if a passage of the Bible says that Solomon married 300 wives, and that's all, when someone say you're lying, it was a thousand. No, he said there's 700 concubines, or is it 700 wives and 300 concubines? I think it's a flip, yes. Yeah. So, so if they told you, no, he had, he had some. Who says it's like, or the Bible tells you that, that, that Esther was the only queen, or if you're told, ah. Only queen. No, but the Bible says that all the other women went into King Ahasuerus' harem. Yes. He went into, yeah, his harem. He also married them. The only one was queen. The one who ruled with him. All the rest never sat on that throne. So you must understand complementariness. All right. So 
I hope I've answered you. Okay. God doesn't necessarily, that, that place where God says, no more. You don't say it. The children of Israel in the wilderness over and over again tested him. Then at some point he said, these ten times have you tested me? He didn't say it at the ninth time. He didn't say it at the seventh time. How did we know? Did he tell Moses, listen, when they test me on the tenth time, after that I will not take it anymore. He didn't tell him that. So it's when the Bible now says, the Lord knows those who are his. And then he warns you, let those who name the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. That's the seal of the Lord. Second Timothy 2, he says, the seal of God stands sure. And then he gives you those two things. This is sure. That it is only God. It's God who knows those who are his. You don't know. You can't go around t- saying, this person belongs to the Lord. How do you know? How do you know they are not pretending? How do you know it's not a Judas? In the book of John, he, he said they went out from, uh, from amongst us because they are not of us. How can you know? Is it that they were never saved? Is it that John, uh, Judas did not do miracles? He did. With which power? The Bible tells you Jesus gave them authority or power, exosia, to cast out demons. He, he gave them. Why would he give Judas if Judas was not one of the two? A sent one. Someone can be sent and then unsent. They can recall you from your assignment, your ambassadorship. Does this happen? That's why apostolos are those that are emissaries sent on behalf of the Lamb. And they look for someone else to fill it with. So our choice is your command. Was that the first time Judas did it? No. He did it multiple times. The book of John, uh, John 6, and another passage says in one that he was a devil, in another that he was a thief. It didn't say he, was, he stole. It says he was a thief. There's, you know the difference between being a thief and stealing? You stole means you stole. Who has not stolen here before? <laughs> No, it's okay. Raise your hand. I won't ask you too many questions. Maybe only two or three. I'm surrounded by thieves. <laughs> There's no righteous, no not one. <laughs> You see why you're worthy of salvation. <laughs> All right. So no hand went up. None. None. Even these babies. Mothers have woken up and seen them sucking breath. <laughs> All right. So. All right. So, so the long and short is that. Nobody for those on camera, there might be two or three righteous souls, but nobody here raised their hand. So everyone ever has stolen, yeah. That doesn't make um them thieves. Now they might have stolen, okay? So once or twice or a couple of times, some twenty, fifty, hundred. <laughs> Cannot be talking for anybody here. Only God knows what these people have done. <laughs> However, there are those who are professionals. They, they have a lifetime commitment, yeah. <laughs> borrow that which is not theirs and keep it as though it is theirs that's what it means to be a thief those who delight in keeping things for people permanently without the knowledge of the person who thinks actively that it is their own those who often dispute the laws of possession that is a thief All right, Judas was a thief did not steal and he, he was doing steadily so when the day came and he took money on Jesus' head <laughs> He had been preparing for this moment all his life. He did not repent on the way. Peter had a leg. We know. He was in a boat. Jesus used his boat to preach. He fell down at his feet and said, Depart from me. I'm a sinful man. Do you know what was eating out his conscience? We don't know what he did. We don't know what that Peter did. Maybe he committed adultery. We don't know. All we know is that he felt he was very bad. But Jesus said, I will make you a picture of men. You are Peter. And on this Petra, you are Petra, Petros, Petra. You are Petros, and on this Petra rock, you are stone, and on this rock, this belief that I'm the Christ, I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not be there. The relationship between a stone and a rock, bedrock, foundation, chief cornerstone, first Corinthians 3 10, then rock after rock after rock after rock after rock that believes that it is the Messiah, the Savior, and joins itself. This is how 
faith will result in the building, the edifying, the edifice. Amen. The Lord wants us to have peace in this knowledge. So how do you balance a person being handed over to a reprobate mind and God dragging one to repentance? Right? They look for trouble. Et balo. Drag. Thrust out violently. Push. Drag. No man can come to me except my father. Drag him. So King James said, draws him. That it's drag. Whoever asked this question, have you attended the Bilwal Bible School? You're going to permit me not to answer fully. So, so quite a number of times when we are having general Bible studies, some things cannot be answered fully because of the time. Secondly, because there are too many people here that don't have the foundation of Hebrews 6, 1 and 2, which is called the foundational teachings of Christ, the foundational principle of the teachings of Christ. The foundation of a building must be there for you to build on it. If you build on top of the soil with no foundation, it will fall the slightest wind. Now, Ephesians 4 calls teachings, even fake teachings, 4 verse 13, but he calls them every wind of doctrine. And Matthew 7 says that the wise man built his house on the rock. He dug deep and placed his house. First Corinthians 3 says, let every man watch how he builds. So, you place your different beliefs that you acquire over time on that original rock. And then there is the man who builds on the sand. Matthew 7 read from verse 21 down to the end. The man who builds on the sand. He said, when the wind came and the rain, the storm, it pushed down the house and great was the fall of the house. I'm explaining Give me Ephesians 4. How people, remember I read this part, that the Apostle Fivefold Ministry, the Helps Ministry, <coughs> that the Leptical equivalent, the disciples, those who lay down their life and obey the Lord, they are to walk until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God as we mature to the full measure of the stature of Christ. Then we will no longer be infants, tossed about by the waves and carried around by every wind of teaching. Your King James says doctrine there. The word doctrine is simply teaching. You are carried around by every wind of teaching and by the clever cunning of men in their deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, they grow up. Next verse. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will in all things grow up into Christ himself, who is. Let's go to Matthew 7, verse 21, 22, 23. In fact, 24, yes. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain fell, the torrents raged, read, and the winds blew. What blew? Now substituted. What is wind? Teachings. And the teachings blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall because its foundation was on and this rock is Christ. First Corinthians 10. Come on. This is how to read the Bible. Okay, go on, stand, sharp, sharp. Substitute, substitute. So everything gets clear. Substitute, substitute. But to know the what it, the rock is Christ. Do we need to open it again? The Bible says this rock followed them in the wilderness and that rock is Christ. So the Bible says this man's foundation was on Christ. And Hebrews 6 verse 1 and 2 says, Therefore, leaving the discussion of the elementary principles of Christ, the elementary foundational, that word elementary is foundational, foundation teachings, principles of Christ. Let us. So when you plant yourself on the foundations of repentance from dead was of faith towards God, the doctrine of baptism, laying on of hands, resurrection of the dead, and a union judgment, the judgment of the age, there are people, they don't have this, and they keep talking about, let us go on to Peleos, perfection, maturity, not laying again the foundation. What are you talking about? You never laid the foundation. You're going forward to what? There's no going forward. You never laid the foundation. Oh, no, no, I'm, I've been in this way. I've known God for 40 years. Tell me the foundation. The majority of Christians have never even heard it. Go and listen to, I think, not Sunday before last. I gave a quick summary. It's short. You should clip it out. I talked, I gave a very quick summary of repentance from dead works. It doesn't say repentance. It says repentance from dead works. 
Most people don't know what dead works is. How can you change your mind? Metaneo from what you don't know. How can you have faith when you don't know it's towards God? How can you believe teachings, doctrines, the daskelia, the didache of baptismas, of plural baptisms, when you believe in either water only or Holy Spirit only, or, you know, some people say, no, you don't need the water, you just need the Holy Spirit. Some say, only need the Holy Spirit, you don't need the water. Some say, there's only water. There's none of this. And almost nobody talks about fire. The baptism of fire is very clear. And Jesus asked his people, can you drink it? The baptism of fire. He says, I will sit down in the book of Malachi 3 and I'll purify the sons of Jacob. Purify. How do you purify? The book of Exodus tells you how. There are two ways. If it is metal, it's with fire. If it is any other thing, it's with water. And that's how purification. See, the whole scripture was made to go together. But again, when you love to cherry pick, go in. Pick out. I like this one. I like this color. I like this color. Mm. Everything God says about career, about husband and wife. Give me the other one. You, you, you cherry pick. You always have faulty vision. And you understand things in shreds. Life will be a jigsaw puzzle. These things about God. Eh, this piece, I don't know where it really fits. So, so your jigsaw puzzle, the pieces, two thirds are in the carton. Then you have formed this one place. It's, it's the leg of a flower. What kind of flower? I don't know. I don't know. I'm not ready to sit down and put them all together. If only you would, you would understand better. Laying on of hands. What does that mean? What is that? What does it do? Resurrection of the dead, not rapture. And there are two. A union judgment. What is that? We know now heaven no or hell. Is that what the Bible says? Ah uh ah. -uh. Which new one will you say again? Nothing new. It's been in these books. 66 of them. For thousands of years. No, because you already know. Let him that thinks he knows know that he does not yet know anything as he ought to. And that is the undoing of most Christians. What are you going to tell me again? <laughs> The mere fact that you have that attitude, that alone, I know what I know. I still think I know like 7%. If you ask me, what do you think? I'll say, eh, but most people I know, I know far more than them. Far, far, far more. But they are very confident in their knowledge. And I'm amazed. And I understand why they don't know. You, how can you be proud like this? God gives grace to the humble. This attitude, no, nothing where God will tell you. When he smells you from afar, he says, love the gate. The only thing they give you when you come around him is manna, food. Or that kind of thing. But not the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. No, 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 no. No, the close, please. This section of the library is for. Have you seen those sections of the library? Did you ever go to it that you couldn't enter? You never, oh, some of you don't know where library is. Library. That place they keep books. When you were in secondary school trying to read for exams or deceiving yourself, whoever you deceive. Was there a, a part in the library they didn't let you enter? Are there libraries you have gone to and is reserved? Do you ever see your lecturers come and pass and enter your inner library? Or you think it's a hotel inside there? There are libraries you don't have access to. You go to University of Unilag, University of Lagos, in Lagos, the NIALS library. You'd have to be a student. You have to show your card. No other student can enter it. It's a, it's a, it's, uh, it's, uh, a law library. You, know, you can't enter. You can't go in and enter. You say, no, I'm a student in Unilad, so <laughs> you're not a law student. Go, I'm not even sure ordinary students can really go. I can't remember now. But the postgraduate students can enter. If you don't show your ID card, you can't enter. So there are libraries that are not public. There's what you call a public library. Go down there. Anyone can enter. Then there are private libraries. That's your school libraries are private. Non-students, are they allowed in? Non-university of your students, are they allowed into this? That's it, because it's private. It belongs to the university of you. You think it's public, it's not. It's private. For the university. Then there are libraries that are even more private than that. Selective. The book of Ephesians points out that there's winds of teaching. They blow babies down. You're supposed to have sucked this milk to your feet are strong. You're supposed to have gone so deep, nothing pushes you. And for those who don't understand why we have been teaching this consistently, non-stop, no matter what else we do. Every, when we end one cycle, we start again. We never stop. You will understand. Because the lack of this thing 
is the major reason people will follow the Antichrist. Because you never had a foundation. Let's finish. Let's finish. What happened to the foolish man? Matthew 7. The Bible tells you the winds came, the storm. It blew. Verse 26. But everyone who hears these words of mine, which words? It already told us. Do you see him say what? Go back. It tells you here that this man, the wise man built his house. Verse 24. Go back. What happened with the man? Everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them. Hears the words and acts on them. This is solid food. Hear and do. Not self-deception. You must do. This is what I preach. They are nice. If someone ever asks you, what does that your pastor preach? He says that what the Bible says, one, you must find it out. Number two, you must do it. All these stories about what you like are irrelevant. You heard it first, first you must hear it. Because you cannot do what you have not heard. But after you have heard, if you don't do, I'm sorry. Let's look for you. Let's find you. Go to the Let's find you. Everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them. It's like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain fell, the torrent raged, and the teachings blew. And I'm telling you, the teachings are coming. Have you not read in the book of Revelations about four angels? What were they holding back? The four what? You think you have heard false teaching yet? I keep telling you. I keep telling you. I keep telling you. When those angels remove their hands, and this earth scatters, when your ears hear things and see your eyes see things, I, I, I mean, I sound like a movie producer. When you see a human being walk on the road and say, I am Christ, you all are. Now they've been saying it since, but they, a lot of them say it without power. And as he finished saying, he does this, and 17 cars lined up on the road. You will decide what you believe. Because that guy just demonstrated power at a level that your mind is boggled. And if you are feeble, spiritually you will be disabled. Guaranteed. You won't stand. Boom. Down you go. The wind has knocked you over. And people say, and they'll come and tell you, listen, I know. I know. I know what pastor used to teach. I know. People, I'm telling you, power! <laughs> Which is why I warn you all. The Bible tells you, 2 Thessalonians 2, that what the Antichrist, the son of perdition will use, will be power. He tells you how he will deceive the world. That it is power he will use. So be very careful. I keep, oh God, help Christians. Instead of sitting down to go deep and plant yourself on the foundation of the teachings of Christ, there's a whole new batch teaching people to doubt scripture and say that scripture is wrong here, is right here. Is wrong here. Is wrong here. You don't know. They, there's no way they know what they are doing. I've sat down sometimes and wondered, can I just leave you people alone and just travel and hunt down these people? And go and sit down and say, please, sir. Please, sir, can we meet? I came all the way from you. I need to see you. We need to talk. But I know, if you know most of them, nothing. They won't listen to you for one second because pride has blinded their eyes. And I'll, if I'm to speak plainly, I will tell you, you don't know. You have actively worked for the devil. You are laying a foundation. You are preparing the way for the Antichrist. You're making people doubt the antidote to the son of perdition. This is the foundation. This is the rock, the word, the word of God, the word. The scriptures say, sanctify them, set them apart. That's what sanctify means. Separate them for yourself. By what? The truth. Thy word is truth. And you took away the one thing that will separate them from the rest of the world in the days of deception and perdition. And you did it with pride while saying, in the name of Jesus, at the same time, you mixed every other person from every time knew that this, this, Understanding of this, this, this. You build on this. We saw it now. The prophecies which have been spoken. Peter said, as long as I'm in the body, I'll remind you of these things. He went on to point it out that no scripture, no scripture came by the will of man. He insisted. He said, none. Paul said, all scripture is given by inspiration. 
and people are sitting down and admiring men who pretty much say no peter said that one no this one is paul that said it mm -mm, not jesus this one john said it i don't know if john was having a headache <laughs> this one uh jude said it uh, james don't even mind james 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 couldn't live his whole life but clearly these people told you that this word jesus himself after he rose from the dead when they asked him a question he quotes he says beginning from moses beginning from moses the resurrected christ proves his points with moses you come and say moses is trash he's gone this is after jesus rose from the dead what evidence do you want and that's how they are actively the power of deception the spirit the mystery of iniquity what's iniquity anomia the the mystery the secret of lawlessness is at work it's at work making people lawless less law law less away law gone they don't even know what they are doing they have no clue they are blinded how did they get so blind oh the normal way people get blind ask samson ask eli ask isaac then how people get blind be anointed be chosen be called and then focused on carnal things focused on natural things venison <sighs> let me bless you my son don't catch anything i'll bring it that food that I like. God bless you. Was there a prophecy that said that the younger will rule over the elder? Who was the younger? Who did he want to bless? How does that work, sir? Are you not supposed to give a charge in accordance with the prophecies which have been spoken? Isaac, Isaac, who do you want to bless? Do you notice by the time Jacob came into play, he understood such things? Did his son Joseph bring two sons? Did he do like this? Did, this, did, did Joseph try to correct Papa and he said, don't worry, you'll be blessed too, but <laughs> do you understand? Not secret, not uh, uh, Joseph, they didn't need to work out anything. He said, no, 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 don't worry. By the time David showed years later, God didn't even bother. There was no time to even be acting. Some will go there. Ah, be, be, for certain, this is the Lord's anointed. I have rejected him. He was ready to pour the oil. Oh, wow. Wow. These ones are all soldiers. This one, okay. No, no, no. You have run out of sun, though. Okay. Is there another child somewhere? Is there another picking? Uh, Mama, your, your wife. Is this all she bought? Yeah. Is there another one? Did anything happen? Any accident? Now, there's contention for those who don't know. David says, for an iniquity. Was I conceived? If you haven't read it before. Yeah. So it is believed. I'm not saying it's so. But it may be very well so. That David was not from this. They didn't even call him. He said, gather your son. They didn't even call him. They didn't bring him at all. So he may have been an illegitimate. He may have been gotten out of wedlock. He may have been a love child. He said, send them to call him, please. Nobody sits down. Yeah, okay, he comes. Small David. The Bible says, small fine boy. Came. Okay. He poured all the oil in his head. This was king. So God didn't go into any complicated, and uh, well, you know, I don't want you guys to feel bad. It's not that I'm saying, I'm looking, what are you talking about? God doesn't do all these stunts. God, God is God, I beg. Are you? Are you God? Next God? Assistant God? Uh, no. So why are you talking when God is talking? You keep quiet. Your opinion is irrelevant. He knows the end from the beginning. This guy does not have the heart of David. He will never do what David does. He may carry out a coup against Saul because he looks like Saul. David is small. David is easily overlooked. But he's the mightiest king Israel would ever have. have. Because God has chosen, First Corinthians 1, <laughs> the despised things of this world to confound the mighty, the foolish things to confound them. It is God. He didn't say God made it. He said he has chosen. He does it and he tells you why. In verse 29 or so. That no flesh might boast in my presence. He doesn't want you to say, you know, when I finish my third degree at the age of 22, I'm going to look around and wonder, what am I really going to do? There's nothing to challenge me. And I turned and I said, I will go into ministry and I'll build a church for the Lord. And I will raise people. 
Uh, uh, God does not like it. That's why every time he uses people like that, he takes you first, puts you in the washing machine, starts it, and travels. <laughs> okay, you think you start and God come back. Uh, you have not met God. If you meet God, you go on and you leave it. You're sure these problems will end in two months. 22 years later, you're like, you, you shall not kill me. You shall not kill me. And his God is like, you got it now. That's exactly what I was doing. I mean, nobody notices your degrees anymore. Does anybody remember you were the best first graduating? Nobody. Good. I think we can use it. They carry shake, shake. They are looking for the former. You know, is inside. Aha. Come. Then he fills you up with him. And when you open your mouth and say to God be the glory, there's no joke. Zero joke. <laughs> it's not, you know, this fake. No, no, it's not about me. You know, I give all the glory to God. God knows when you're lying. Which glory to God? Nine over ten, you, you're like, I hope they notice me. So God squeezes you out. Your irrelevance becomes your irrelevance is is not just significant, it's total. God loves to use people like that. That's why when God passes you through things, allows you to go through things, and you know you're not living in sin or disobedience. Don't be angry, don't be stressing. I remember when I used to sit down and look at my life. Not that I fell to sin or anything, but my spiritual, I don't know how to explain it. It's hard to explain. I remember years ago, and I go like, God, wow. You see, that I'll never have those experiences with you. You see, I don't even understand. So when I look around, you know, years ago, even once in a while, I'll just think, God, <laughs> you're the one that knows what you're doing. You're the one that knows what you're doing. Because me, I have no hand. When you know capacity, you know, all that boldness. I always say I knew more. 15, I used to say 10 years ago, but now it's 15. I knew more 15 years ago. If you ask me anything, I'll answer. Oh, 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 let me answer it. Now, I know far more now, but I feel I know less. Because part of what I've come to know is how little I know. The older I grow, the more I know, the, the less confident I am. Things I could speak with confidence about. Now, I'm like, well, there are three other possible options. Our foundation, if it is not founded on the teachings of Christ, there are teachings that are coming. They will knock you out of existence. It's already happening. It's been happening for ages. But it's going to get very much worse at the end of the age. The angels, the messengers of God that he uses to restrain falsehood from being too strong will be removed. Look at what's happening in countries of the world around the earth. Look at how crazy it is. If you see what is happening all around, the things that are being taught in school, being taught on through cartoons, Satan worship. If you see the incredible things happening, if you see things that five years ago no one could try, ten years Bob Jones prophesied. He saw it in 1975, and they told him that men, he said, homosexuals will come out of the closet. He said they will come out openly. Nobody believed it. They're like not possible. He said the abortion pill will be perfected. People swallow a tablet and get an abortion. And they told him, Do you know what an abortion is? What you're describing is not possible. He said he saw Chinese men in the rice paddies holding televisions in their hands. This is 1975. For those who don't know, who think smartphones have existed since, they showed up around the year 2003, 4, 5. I'm saying that because I don't know when it hit Nigeria, but before that, <laughs> they, they just I, I was I had finished university long before these things phones these things you take for granted before they existed he said many things included in that he said there will be a third world war just that's that Jaram giving you I've told you for a long time there will be a third world war they will be boom bam boom and the second world war ended with America inventing the nuclear weapon that's how the Second World War ended. You understand? Someone made something that when he used it and beat Japan, the war ended. I, I don't know if you understand. They were fighting from 1939 to 1945. 1939, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45. Seven years, give or take. When they dropped Fat Boy, the A-bomb, Tommy Bomb, on Japan, on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Boom. 
Nobody felt like fighting again. Only America had nuclear weapons then. Now, Israel has, India has, Pakistan has, China has, North Korea has, Iran wants. <laughs> France, Great Britain, and a few others. They are not many. They all have it now. Russia has. So what happens when you throw a nuclear bomb on me? You, you, you stone me. I stole you back. <laughs> the problem with nuclear bombs is that one, this is not keke keke, this is not boom boom. <laughs> this is, this is, wah. <laughs> Who has seen the, the picture of a nuclear bomb before? It's a bad thing. Like in the place where they drop them, things don't grow. I don't need anything. You don't live in it. Long after the war don't end, you don't come to it or you carry cancer. You carry cancer. You were far, far, far in a uh, rich state, uh, Abia state. They drop one here, depending on the size. And that was a small one they dropped. It was small. The ash touched you for there. The picking for your belly. One leg does go. The negative effect is so bad that you don't want it. But there are prophecies of atomic bombs, nuclear, they call them nuclear weapons, right? being dropped on. Europe, I told you years ago, a woman, old Christian woman, she saw, she said, the TV, there were many channels. There used to be one channel in a country. You don't understand. We call it cable. And then I see all sorts of things that you take for granted now. This was when nothing like that, your mind couldn't even think it. And then she saw, I saw a mushroom cloud over Europe. That Europeans who come to Africa, the way they treated blacks when they went there like slaves, they'll be, blacks will be treating white people like that. It's not correct. I'm not saying that. I'm informing you of the future. This world. There'll be areas where nobody can live. The sun is blocked. They don't see the sun, maybe for years. There's no sun anymore. The, the sky is damaged. This, uh, when I, I, I get the gist to now, I get someone who say, someone once told me, an older man said, well, that, um, you know, we have to be careful. Churches are preached end time. I don't know if you'll be alive when the time comes out. Tell them, I heard that thing you said about preaching about end time. Do you, do you hear what happened? So Jesus and the disciples and the apostles spent all their time talking about the end time. Me, I should talk about now. Who prepares when you tell them about now? Your blouse is blue and white. Aren't you amazed? Doesn't this motivate you? It doesn't. Uh-huh. What can I use to motivate you, please? You ate today. You ate today. You in white. You ate food. Come on, show some. You're impressed. Oh, you're not impressed. Who is impressed by what happens? We know already. What are you talking about? Who is motivated? Who is driven to act differently when you inform them of what is common knowledge? People are motivated to move when you tell them about things to come. People prepare for what is coming. Don't tell them what is coming. What? Why should they prepare? So they plan like everyone. They plan, oh, I'm, I'll just have money. Money. If you are aware that money will fail, why will you gather it? If you are aware that money will fail, what are you accumulating it for? You won't use it up. When you have it, you won't use it for good. Didn't First Timothy tell you, chapter 6, what to do with money if you have a lot of it? He said you should store for the age that is coming. He's very clear that there's another time coming that you should invest in that time. You spend it here for them. Jesus was even more clear. Um, Luke chapter 12 or 10. And he told them. He said, little, is it 10 or 12? Hey, little flock, verse 31. Maybe you could. Okay. 31, little flock. Quick, quick, quick. But seek his kingdom and these things will be, no, well, okay. And these things will be added to you. Do not be afraid, little flock, verse 32. For your father is pleased to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to the poor. He tells you what to do, man. Provide yourselves with purses that will not wear out. That's not on earth. Earthly purses wear out. An inexhaustible treasure in heaven, he tells you. Where no thief approaches and no moth destroys. Because thieves and moths will fill the earth. They will, he tells you. He tells us. He calls them little flock. And he started by saying, don't be afraid. Why? Because our major reason for disobeying all the things Jesus says is fear. If I do this, how will I? If I do this, what will happen? If, 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 if. And what is faith? Faith towards God. That is where you hear something God has said. And you do it. Why? Because you believe that the God who said it knows what he's saying and will be able to take care of you. This way, dark times will come on the earth. The very bright times will come. It's in the book of Isaiah. 
chapter 61. Arise, stand, for your light is come. Darkness, verse 60. Darkness will cover the earth and deep, gross darkness, the peoples, but upon you, so in the midst of this deep, thick darkness, what will happen? The Lord will rise. Yeah. People will turn to the Lord in large number. There will be people, for those who have not heard some stories, in Indonesia, they will be walking through the jungle at night, literally a light, no, not a human light, light will be in front of them and behind. So when that thing happens, you don't read the Bible and say, the Lord, glory will go before you and his glory will be your rear guard. It's not theoretical. Mm-mm. Because they would see it. God would tell them, go to the next village and preach. And a group of people go, passing through the, 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 the tangled jungles of, of Indonesia. And light with no thought. They are seeing real light shining. And they get to the next village and they are perfectly dry. And it was raining cat and dog. And the people are like, how are you dry? They said, God covered us. They said, no, no. God said for the umbrellas. No umbrellas. The presence of God, like a canopy. Ah, there's nothing that hasn't happened. You just have to hang around. You will hear. You will hear. Amazing thing. In the darkness that will cover the earth. The darkness of what? Amongst other, apart from physical troubles, false teaching. If you follow some of the things happening around the earth, your heart wants to fail you. I was hearing the other day and someone was talking about how Walt Disney, whatever, he was in the Masonic Lodge like most people were. He was in the Lodge. Many Christians in America used to be in the Lodge. They didn't know any better. Freemason thought it's like a club for men. But that the man, he said someone, and this old man was talking and saying that his cousin also knew him. He said that the man used to, said he used to read his Bible every day and that he was trying to convey through Disney wholesome family values that some of the things they put across was almost blatantly Christian, some hidden. The message is conveying something godly and all of that. That those were the intentions of Walt Disney. That if Walt Disney, Disney was around now, that he would never. But look at what Walt Disney is doing now. Everything, they put in gay couples. Everything. You know, and a video leaked some months ago where there was this top executive in Disney saying that, wow, she realized when she put in these things, nobody objected from above. So she just started putting every chance she had. She put queer things. They are not even hiding again. It's in your face that they want your children. They are teaching children in school. They are telling them directly in many Western countries, directly. They are brainwashing them completely. Male, female, no. When you grow up, they are putting out books. In unbelievable books. Some states sued a, an author the other time. Last week, the judgment came out. She has a picture book, drawings, drawing, a comic, a, a graphic book, they call them, a, a graphic novel about her life. She's, I don't know what she it is. I have no idea. It's male, female. You know, now nobody knows what. And if he calls himself he, he must be a she. Whatever, she. Right in there. You know, draws herself, talks about her life. Oh God, I'm sorry. You can't hear. You can't. It, it can't be said. Mouth cannot say. I'm serious. I, like, I the person I was talking was saying this is the part is so horrible, but that this is the less horrible part. And me, I can't even repeat it. And the drawings of all this stuff published in the libraries of children's schools and states get together and sue. That they should remove these books from our children's library. Why will you corrupt us with drawings of your corrupt life? And the judge passes. No, the book is not obscene. The book has, again, you know, like I can't even, I can't even tell you. Drawings though, not words, written, drawings. And that is, so it must be in those schools. The children must. And every child wants to read that book. Because young people want to see things. Hmm, what is that, sir? Let me see. What uh, else? Uh, uh, put you on that book on there. God help. God help. There is war on our hands. You might be there saying, no, it's not happening in Nigeria. Be careful because you do not know. But Risky was alone. James Brown in Port Harcourt joined. I hear there might be up to five or six or more now. How long has it taken? Openly. Openly. It's open. Shamelessly. People admire them. 
people admire them. All of us must know. All of us must understand that things can change so fast. Your brain will not comprehend it. You must not be foolish. Because all these things we are saying, churches support it all around the world. One guy went out and was preaching a group of in, in the U.S. some last year or so. The guy came and was preaching against sin. You must turn away from sin. Pa -ta, pa -ta -ta, ta -ta. Some Christians from the fellowship of a church heard it. Young people. And in love to reveal the heart of Jesus, they came out the choir and drowned him out. God loves them. Loud. So nobody could hear him. He didn't hear me. A choir came and shouted him down with a song. So that the poor unbelievers around do not have a wrong picture of Jesus. Not Jesus. That's not our Jesus. They apologize to feet. That happened. It's getting far worse than you can imagine. I'm going to answer this one very quickly. And we pray and go. About the commands, charges, where do we get it from? Abba. Don't be sleeping in church with you. What if the person who gave the prophetic word doesn't know the commands? What are commands? <laughs> you see, you see the problem you're in. Welcome to God's Thy House. Keep coming. And I want you to stay in contact. I see it's an online question. I just saw that now. Please stay in contact. I beg you. The commands are the scriptures of God. The commands. My son, keep my words. Treasure my commands within you. Keep my commands and live. And my law as the apple of your eyes. Proverbs 7, from verse 1. My son, keep my words. So the words of God are his commands. Okay? The laws of God are his commands. They are found, I've been saying it from Genesis to Revelation. They are there. Obey those charges, okay? The person that gave you the prophetic word is often not the person, necessarily the person that gave you the command. Please, hear me, whoever asked that question. I said, we read, Paul said that I am charging you, giving you a command or charge according to the prophecies that came in line before. So whether it was Paul or someone else that gave the prophetic word, the charge, just like I do today, I look at people. Some of them have heard prophetic words that God has spoken concerning them. And I look or I know things as their pastor, as their disciple, or I've heard something they, they may have been the ones to tell me. And I see how their actions will not allow them to fulfill those prophetic words. So I charge them, I command them based on what I know is the word over their life, the words over their life. I look at people, I know this one is called to be an evangelist, this one is called to be a teacher, this one is called to be an intercessor, and I look at them and I realize the way they are living. That word will fail like it fell for Judah. Maybe not that bad. It will fail. They will fall short of it. So I charge them, I command them accordingly. I say something like, make sure every day you do this. So I tell them, join this group. I tell them, do this. Or some, now, most times we don't stand and explain and say, listen, the reason why I'm telling you to do this is because of one, two, three. No, we, if you disciple people for any length of time, you cannot, even saying itself, you're even tampering with it. Why? Because the most important thing for them to learn is just to be obedient. So you just tell them. You don't go into explaining everything. The Bible says the Lord Jesus, even though he was a son, he learned to obedience. Through the things he suffered or endured, the things he went through. So you put people through things to help them fulfill their calling. And you look at them and you see the way you are, you will never fulfill your calling. Not with this. I was hearing about uh, um, um, Beyonce and her friend or their group before, Destiny Child. Destiny Child, someday. And it says that how their trainer trained them to sing and have stamina is he'll make them to be running while singing. Have you ever heard that one before? So they are running. <laughs> so their lungs have to breathe and also be singing. Mm. So that's part of how her talent was honed. Even though she came and sang horrendously, is that so strong? Often. Getting worse and worse every day. The woman has sat on four horses, red, black, white, and Greek in four different albums. Maybe it's a coincidence. People have job. Do your own job. 
See Job, the anointing from darkness. That girl has sat on four different horses at four different times. All colors from the Bible of the four horses, the four horsemen. One human being. Maybe it's a mistake. Okay, there's nothing like that. There's no mistake. Assignments are being performed. And it's not only the kingdom of God that has messenger. Quick story. You want to hear this? Have you heard of Anton Labey? I told you about him many times. The founder of the church of Satan, Los Angeles. I just heard this. Bob Jones was the man sent people. Bob Jones is to preach somewhere. And he hears Bob Jones, the prophet. He died in 2014. Servant of God. God was with him in a very significant way. He had a shortcoming. He was basically man of God. He was restored even where he had fallen short. So that's fine with God. And Bob Jones is there and he says, the Lord tells him, you have, you have four people or three people here. They sent you to come here and curse me. Uh, uh, you can't, uh, God loves me. I love God or something. You can't curse me. But the challenge is that if you curse me, it will come and come back on you. He wasn't cursing him. He would say, I love you and God loves you and I, I, I don't want you to be cursed because your curse will not land on me. You know, um, did you hear me saying something like this a month ago? So I just heard this two days ago or yesterday. And he said, the curse, now if you're here, Jesus loves you. Come. Three men ran out. They dressed normally. They were direct disciples of Anton Lavey, direct disciples of the founder of the church of Satan. Not second hand, third hand. They discipled and he sent them go there, put witchcraft a course, a real. This is not this empty course, this is real stuff. And they came out. And he said, There's one more of you. Come, don't be afraid. God loves you. Da, 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 da. And the guy came, four of them, and they became Christians. That day or the next day, a car pulls up with dark glasses in front of where they were, and the window goes down. And Anton Lave is sitting and he looks at him. Doesn't open his mouth, but Bob Jones hears. You think it's over? I'm still coming for you. And Bob Jones answers. He said he feels some fear, but because the guy puts fear on him, he, he pushes it. It's a real thing. It comes out on him. And he feels it, and he, even though he's afraid a bit, but he feels that thing, and then he pushes it and says he, something like, can't cause, so you can't put anything on me that God won't allow. And the man answers, you see. Something like that. He answers aloud. He didn't open his mouth the first time. But when this one answers in his mind or heart, he answers and he, he hears his thoughts directly and he answers in mind and he answers in the words. Okay, you see. Winds up the window. Drives away and dies the next day. And that's how Anton Lavedo. He told him he would give him a heart attack. He died of a heart attack. Yes. Very nice story. Why is it not talked about? How come I've never heard it before? Now, you want to hear, why would they tell you? Now, Bob Jones was a correct preacher. I would have gone around talking about it. You know, <laughs> the founder of the church of Satan. Hey, the Lord knows those who are his. Now, I heard this from my vicar. I just heard it from someone else. And he was telling this story in 2019. Anyways, so, I, I, I'll be yeah, here from someone else. I can't remember who. Oh, no, no, it's from Shambos. Shambos was telling the story. But the point is, there are many such things happening all around. Many, many such things. You have to know this, that there are ways to fight and there are things we have to do. But we must do them the God way. There's the man way. The man way will not carry you. Okay? Can you explain this scripture? Ecclesiastes 10 4. It says, if the spirit of the ruler rises against you, don't leave your post. For conciliation pacifies great offense. It simply means, I'm, I'm only going to give the, the natural this thing. If a leader gets offended at you, someone over you, that's not the time to go out. That's the time to stand in one place. That's the time to keep doing your duty. Whether your post is an official position or you're standing there and he was angry at you. Why would you? Then that's when you choose to walk away. Maybe he was distracted and told, Wait, where is he? Ah, and then you guys tried me. Lock him up or something. It's very direct. It's not complicated. So you're looking for a spiritual meaning to it. Hmm? For calmness lays great offenses to it. Don't react when someone over you, superior, is offended with you. That's not the time. When you're calm, when you act in ways that show gentleness, 
it can pacify. It's just telling you that it stopped answer turns away right now. That's that's what it's telling you. It's not it's not that big a deal, and it can apply in many situations. Is it right for me as a guy to marry a lady older than I am? Other pastors say it is wrong. It's not wrong. Must I marry a lady just because my papa has said so? No. And the lady is claiming to see vision. No. Uh, no, you don't have to. Some pastors. I'm not among the pastors that say that. That's not right. Okay. Please, I don't believe in the supernatural. Hey, yeah. So... Everything happens according to the law of nature. Okay. Prove to me that there is a supernatural. That, please, wait now. Do you dare ask? All right. Now, this person may be here physically or online. Okay. My people, well, I don't know if this is your first opportunity. We like having fun. We are relaxed. I'm not uptight. Don't want to die young. We are relaxed, and this is our family church. We might have a few visitors, okay, but this is our church, so it's family. So don't mind them. They don't mind me. <laughs> uh, the evidence that I should prove to you that there is a supernatural is that you are tuned into this meeting this long. You heard all those things. That I, I was wondering why I started telling supernatural stories. I was wondering. It's a long time. I was wondering. Inside me, I was wondering, who is the unbeliever here? Who is the unbeliever here? I'm telling you. I was wondering, who is it that doesn't believe in supernatural? Why am I telling? When this story about Tommy Bomb, you know, all these things. Wait, I, this story, I used to tell them in 217, 218. These days, I don't, I don't tell stories again now. I, <laughs> I was wondering. Welcome. 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 You are my evidence that you stayed on. Because if I tune into a channel where people are talking nonsense, I usually off it very fast. But you stay. That's supernatural. That's supernatural. Secondly, it's not that you don't believe in the supernatural. There's something, uh, there's a struggle. We struggle, okay? This is what I'll suggest. <gasps> Pray to God, hmm, which is su- a supernatural being, and say, God, if you are there, and you may have prayed it before already, to be honest, prove yourself to me, okay? If you do that, Pray it and leave it. Go and eat beans, rice. Go and do anything you want after praying it. Okay? I will pray. Let me pray for you now once. Father God, prove to this person that there is a supernatural. Amen. Amen. On one condition, make sure you come and testify, please. Uh, send, if you're online, write it and say, do you know this happened? Okay, let's be happy with you, okay? Um, you know, that's how much I attempt to prove the supernatural. There's no other need or way. Just know that for me, if I may tell you for 60 seconds, that I and many people here have seen so many supernatural. These people seated here are the proof of the supernatural. Have you ever heard any of our testimony? Have you ever heard what kinds of shenanigans these people were up to? Have you heard the fantastic things that people seated here now? Abba, please go to our website. You want to believe the supernatural? Let me th- go to our website, g-lh.org, the website, God's Lighthouse, g-lh.org. Go there, go to the place, part that talks about life testimonies. Read it. Every story you read, hmm? send in a message. As you finish reading one, ask, whose testimony is this? Who is this person? He's not real. What we will do is we'll give you the phone number or the email address of that particular the person. Because those are not people's testimonies. I said those are, are people's testimonies. The ones seated here. Many are not here because they are at home due to the ongoing uh, university strike in Nigeria. Talk with them if you want. I will give you 100 numbers. I don't know how many testimonies are there. Okay, at least 50. Speak with each of them specifically. Ask them. Drill them on those stories they are telling. Let them tell you more. And then tell every single one of them that every story they tell you is a lie. Is a lie. Is a lie. Is a lie. At the end of it, it should be supernatural that you could doubt that many people. <laughs> and that will prove the supernatural. No matter how it ends. But if you really are sincere, just ask them. Tell them. Read their story. And then query that thing they said. Okay? I don't want to tell you any by stats. It, it will just keep rolling in. 
one person can tell you 20 supernatural things that happened to them, not what was read in a book or a preacher said. And then you have to explain to them what really happened that was so abnormal. I hope you understand. So that's my uh, answer to you, okay? I prayed for you. God bless you. Many people have doubted, but uh, when you see, you can't doubt. You can't. When it has happened to you, you cannot doubt anymore. How can you doubt? You can't doubt impossible things. Someone is in a car, an accident, and then see themselves standing by the road, and everybody in the car is there, and you're standing on your feet, no scratch. There's no time you remember coming out. There's no time you remember being thrown. There's no unconsciousness. There's nothing. Nothing. They're just standing. How? That's supernatural. People getting healed of things they've had for 10 years and it's just gone. Endless, endless things. There are those who don't believe in the supernatural. It's not that they don't believe. They are struggling. There's a fear in your heart that if you believe, it means you're going to be proven stupid. But you won't. I'm not stupid. You can believe in the supernatural too and be intelligent, okay? I never answered this first question properly. Balancing being handed over to a reprobate man. Join this class. It's a long answer. I'll need to open plenty of scriptures. But just go with this. The balance between a reprobate mind and being dragged to repentance. Go through the classes. When you're done, whatever is left of this question, ask it again. If you're not here physically, um, visit, sign up with our school of ministry, God's Army of Life, the Kingdom Academy. Or go through the audios. Now, the audio series I did on this, that is there. But if you go to the video series on Gamka, um, it might be more specific, possibly. So you could go through that. The only thing I don't think I did here was to go through Hebrews 11, which maybe I should still do someday. The specifics of the different examples of faith towards God. Finally, what is the scope of blasphemy beyond forgiveness? The scope is this age and the next. Jesus said, they will not be forgiven in this age, neither the next one. How we interpret that is that there is one age. We interpret that there is one age and after that, eternity. It's one of the common Gentile errors. Gentiles. But the Bible speaks of ages. It says that Jesus is the king of the ages. Ages, not one age. Ages. There is ages. Then the Bible tells you that there's coming a time in First Corinthians 15 where Jesus will submit to God, the Father, and the Father will become all in all. In other words, you don't know what will happen after the age. The last age we know about, we know about, we've been informed of in the books of Scripture, is the age that ends after the thousand years and people are thrown into the lake of fire and fire fell from heaven he calls it outside outside at the door is the camp of God's people you find this in the book of Revelation and then he tells you about the city of God the heavenly Jerusalem and then he stops there but First Corinthians 15 tells you about a time when every enemy will be put on that feet and the last enemy to be destroyed will be death which death because second Revelation 20 tells you about the second death. Right now, we are living in first death. Second death is coming. When you understand what first death is, maybe you can understand what second death is. First death is not when you die. No, you're living in it. All of us are under first death now. Romans 5 says, death entered the world. When Adam said, second death is coming. It's called the lake of fire. But the Bible says that the last enemy that will be destroyed is death. He says death will be abolished. He says there will be no more death. Is that in the Bible? Am I quoting scripture? The scriptures don't tell you beyond that. It does tell you that Jesus will put every enemy on that foot. At the time you see Revelation 22, there are still enemies calling him. That is why let him that thinks he knows. No, that he does not yet know anything as he ought to. So we cool down, we act humbly, and not concern our things, ourselves with things that are too high for us. Okay, There are things that are too high. Say, I behave like a wind child, David said. I know, I know exactly what happened. You don't know nothing. Let him that thinks he knows. Know that he does not yet know everything. That he even ought to know. So, we know what we know. But we are seeing him. When we see him, we will know him as we are known. Is this good? Pena will answer this one. 
that she explained about women covering hair and men wearing trousers. Iran. Get up. <laughs> you are going to pray. Please, whoever asked that question about trousers and uh, head cover, hmm? I have answered it so many times. So be patient. You must be very new. Ask that question online. Get a phone number for a leader. Let them send you a message, a clip on it. Okay? Don't, there's no, if I answer it for three, five minutes, it's poor quality. So listen to the 35 minute answer. So you'll be happier. Amen. Right where you are, you stand to your feet. Have you learned anything today? Yes. I want you to pray and thank God. Tell him thank you quickly. Father, I'm grateful for the things I've learned. I'm thankful for light. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Amen. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you for light. Thank you for understanding. Amen. Now I want you to ask the Lord, what was the emphasis? He answered many questions, but the emphasis was about not allowing another to take your place as you obey the commands that will lead you to life. Yes, even though the prophecies have come, if you ever despise the commandments of the one who gave you the prophecy, like Judas, there will be 12 thrones and you'll be unknown. There will be 12 thrones and you'll be unknown. Another will take your place. God does displace people. Habitually, people have been displaced. What people make a mistake about is that if God has a plan, no one can stop it. You are correct. But the participants in that plan can change any day. So never, ever, people, they are servants of God, you know. They are fulfilling people's callings. A certain man of God was told, after God called him and he wasted time, he called him again. He said, listen, you are the third person. If you waste my time, I'll give it to someone else. He said, he told him, you are the third person. Now, if you see that man of God, you say, wow, this guy is amazing. Look at what God does through him. He's the third. First person rejected. Second person rejected. They gave it to him. The same calling. People don't understand callings. It's an office. It's an office. It's a job. Oh, come and walk with us. <laughs> Either you start saying, no, 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 I don't want this stress. Have you, how many times have you heard this thing? And the person stayed and was faithful. And next thing they appointed him to one high priest. That would have been you. If you had accepted, but you did not accept. So the job description still exists, but it's not you giving the testimony. That's how callings work. I've shown it to you in the Bible. There are many other stuff. People can be displaced. People are displaced every day and they don't know. So I'm asking you, I'm begging you, I'm appealing to you by the mercies of God that you do not allow your prophecy to be fulfilled by another. I want you to pray and say, God, please, may this never happen. May this never be my portion. I desire to fulfill what you called me to fulfill. May I not sell my birthright for a pot of food. Oh Lord, my God. Oh Lord, our God. Oh Lord, our God. Tarabakashata. Help us, deliver us, save us. Oh Lord, our God. Oh Rabbi, thy brothers are so good, my brother. May praise so keen, my brother. Let us so never be. Oh, my dear brothers, so good, my brother. May praise be to us, so good, my dear brothers. May praise be to us, so good, my dear brothers. And nobody take my place. May I be found standing on my post. May I not step away from my post. Judah stepped away from his post. Matthias took it. Just tell the Lord, please have permission to do anything to stop me from losing my position in you. Anything, Lord God, please. Anything, Lord God. May I not be ashamed when I behold you. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Now, whether you're online, or here, I want I want to pray for you. I want you to hear this and receive it if you can. Father, I'm asking for everyone here that none of them, none, because all things are possible with you. You said through your son that he lost none except the son of perdition, the one who had his place to go. I ask concerning every lie here, in every heart, every person who has been told by the enemy over and over again that they have been lost without hope. You spirit of lies, I rebuke you. I command you to take your hands off. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. may the goodness and kindness of God be revealed to you. Amen. Oh, it's not by works of righteousness which you've done, but according to his great mercy, 
by the washing of regeneration and the renewal of the Holy Spirit. May your Holy Spirit renew. May the washing of your word wash. Open the eyes of everyone who is terrified with the idea that they've been rejected. Rejected and have no hope of restoration. Help them understand that when people come to that place, since they are rejected, they typically have no clue and do not care about such matters. Father, I ask you, help them know that your word says that if anyone is amongst those God intends to punish, in Jeremiah 18, and they turn, that you accept them and relent concerning the punishment and disaster. To everyone out there who has felt that God has rejected them, the word of the Lord is that come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, all, and I will give you rest. Come to rest. His name is Jesus. He is your Sabbath. He is your resting place. He is your deliverer. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Those given up to a reprobate mind do not call on the name of the Lord. Receive deliverance. Amen. Receive freedom from fear. Amen. Spirits of lies, you are bound by the truth. Amen. The light shines in the darkness. The darkness cannot comprehend it. Let there be light. 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 Amen. 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 Father, I ask we will live as light wherever we go. Amen. And we will help many others come to the light. Amen. And we will be a source of preparation for the coming days. And everyone in this place will be planted in the foundation called Christ. And they will never be shaken. Amen. When the winds come, when the lies come, when the falsehood abounds, they will be found standing. Amen. They will not be deceived. Let this be your goodness to us now and forever. Thank you. If you have an offering, take it. Father, I ask that every offering given that be received right now, every offering given, let it be received from you and let it be used to extend the kingdom. We thank you that you provide us all things which we can enjoy. All things which we can enjoy. We ask you as we go about our business, let your will be done. Let your kingdom come. Thank you. We thank you for these air conditioners. We ask that you serve your kingdom. Yes. They work well. They work perfectly. We dedicate it to the purposes of heaven. Thank you. Go with your children. Bring them back. Reveal yourself personally to multiple ones here. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Thank you. We believe. Help our unbelief. Yes. Amen. God bless you. There's a basket by the door and elsewhere. You may drop it. If this is your first time, come, let me pray for you. And um, our online people, if you need to talk with someone, please just reach out to any of our contacts on our website. We'll be glad to continue the discussion. We pray you receive eyes to see, ears to hear, and an understanding heart. Remember, Test all things and hold fast to what is good. For more information, visit our website at gods-lighthouse.org.